The following is a presentation of Turner Sports. Oh, honey, the satellite's on the fritz again. It's NBA playoff season on TBS, and I see baseball. I mean, I love baseball. The roar of the popcorn, the smell of the crowd, that uh, tomahawk thing, the Marlins, the Braves. But it's the NBA playoffs. Where's Camp? Vladi? Those Hollywood stars. Rose, two sets. We need two sets, Rose. One set, Herb. Braves versus Marlins, then Sonics at Lakers. Two sports, one husband, no waiting. Now sit back and enjoy yourself. Welcoming you to another night of Atlanta Braves baseball from Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. Braves assured of a good road trip. The worst they can be is four and two. The best they can be is five and one if they can win tonight. The offense has been chugging along pretty good, Joe Simpson. Let's hope it stays that way. Especially in the clutch department, Skip. Uh, several guys in the order that are really coming through when the game's on the line. When you have guys in scoring position, that's when you want to get them home. Topped off by Chipper Jones, who as a rookie hitting over 600 in that situation with guys in scoring position, but also Marquise Grissom at the top of the order. He's not getting a lot of hits, but he's making them count. And for a winning ball club, one of the keys is to score runs with two outs, and that's something the Braves are doing real well, too. Of their 42 runs thus far, 23 have come with two outs. That'll help you win. $4 million man Steve Avery on the mound for Atlanta. Right-hander Pat Rapp will pitch for the Marlins, back with the starting lineups. Then the play-by-play -play story right after this. Welcome back to Joe Robbie Stadium. Overcast skies here for game three of this three-game set. Braves will try to sweep the Marlins as we get set for play. And here's the starting lineup, the Tylenol starting lineup for Bobby Cox tonight. And it's a different lineup with Ryan Plesko going on the disabled list. More about that in a moment. Marquise Grissom, Jeff Plowser, Chipper Jones. That stays the same, but look where Chipper's playing. He's in left field. Fred McGriff, that's cleanup. Then David Justice and Jose Oliva, who will be at third base tonight. Charlie O'Brien has had some success against Pat Rapp, so he will be behind the plate. Mark Lemke at second, Steve Avery the pitcher. The Marlins are taking the field, and defensively, Andre Dawson gets the start tonight in left field as the Marlins try to juice up their offense a little bit. Chuck Carr in center, Gary Sheffield in right. Old friend Terry Pendleton will be at third base. Mario Diaz is at short. Kilvio Veras is at second base. Jeff Conine moves from left field to first tonight. Rookie Charles Johnson's behind the plate and on the mound. Pat Rapp, the right hander, 27 years old, 6'3, 215 out of Sulphur, Louisiana. Makes his second start of the year. You see his 94 numbers. He pitched well against the Giants in his first start, worked five and two thirds innings, gave up five hits, but only one run. That run cost him as he lost one to nothing, but that's nothing new to Pat Rapp. Six of his career 17 losses have come by shutout. Last year in his victories for the Marlins, when he was seven and eight, he had an ERA under two, so he can be tough at times. And they're certainly hoping that he's able to throw strikes tonight. Renee Latchman told me before the ball game, the manager of the Marlins, that they've got to quit walking people. Of course, the Marlins in the first two games have walked eight each night. They've been hitting batters. He said, if we walk eight again tonight, we won't be able to beat Macon, let alone Atlanta. Umpires for tonight's ball game, and for our TBS broadcast first time we've seen the regular umps back and we're happy certainly to see them back last night here at Joe Robbie Stadium this crew received a standing ovation when they took the field Eric Gregg will be behind the plate he's in midseason form you might say Jerry Davis is at first base Mike Winters will be working at second and around at third as crew chief Terry Tata crowds of 23,000 the first night of this series last night 21,000 but couple of the lowest crowds in their brief history here skip maybe another sign of some of the fans a little reluctant to come out and watch baseball and not exactly a huge turnout tonight this may be the smallest crowd of the three games we'll have to wait and see as they're still filing in here Marquise Grissom leads it on for Atlanta hitting 207 
but he's driven in four runs from the leadoff spot. Well, the Braves are doing their part to try to win the fans back with a six and one start. Now the front office is chipping in. We'll tell you about that as we go along in the first inning. And Pat Rapp cuts it loose, and we're underway. Grissom has not had much luck against this fellow. One out of 18 against him. Braves have reduced ticket prices in the upper pavilion area by 50 percent. The pitch that's right in there. That's 50 percent for all Tuesday through Saturday home games in May and June. The family value game ticket offer will cover 20 dates effective beginning tomorrow. A little bit inside upper pavilion level tickets normally five dollars each but on family value game dates tickets will be discounted to two fifty each. The offer covers advance and day of game purchases at the Braves ticket office Ticketmaster, and by phone. Tickets purchased at Ticketmaster centers or by phone will carry a reduced service charge. That's good news. Yes it is. He got him at the knees outside corner Grissom caught looking one away. That ref's got a good arm. He throws hard, but he had a horrible spring. He couldn't get anybody out. They were a little concerned about leaving him in the rotation for the season opener for him in San Francisco. But again, he pitched very well, and they're hoping more of the same tonight. Jeff Blounds with the batter hitting an even 200. No homers, no runs driven in. Weak chop to first. Easy play, Conine right at the bag. And two quick and easy outs for Mr. Rep. Here's Chipper Jones, who tonight is the left fielder. By the way just to cover some unfinished business we do a talk show before most of the home games on radio on the Braves Network and last night a fellow asked me where Mike Balecki was pitching and I told him I didn't know and then we got back flipped the TV on at the hotel and he was working in relief for the California Angels so that's the answer to that question and it's good that Mike's still in the big league he's a good guy pitch to Jones a little low one ball no strikes. Chipper hitting 320. He's driven in six runs. The Phillies in town tomorrow night. Big fireworks show after the game. Downstairs. Saturday, kids insulated school bottle night for the first 15,000, 14 and under. See Chipper right on that back line in the batter's box. Batting left handed tonight. The right hander out there. You know, how do those insulated bottles know to keep the hot stuff hot and the cold stuff cold? One of the miracles of nature. Never understood that. They're smarter than they look. 3-0. That's right in there. 3-1. Then on May 12th, the Friday night, when Cincinnati comes to town at Zoo Atlanta night. First 10,000 kids 12 and under get some zoo trading cards and a free pass to the zoo. Full count, three and two. Rap battles back. Chipper's, so a lot's going on at the ballpark. Sorry, Skip. Chipper asked me before the ball game if I brought an outfielder's glove with me on this road trip. He didn't. He's in left field tonight. And he was going to have to borrow one. Oh boy, that got off Rap's glove. Let's see if he's okay. He is. Jones is out, and the inning is over. He got the glove up. I think it then hit him in the face. I think the glove with the. Got slapped back into his face, but he's apparently okay. That goes one six three, and that could have been a very very unpleasant scene. Fortunately, it's not. Bottom of the first, no score. Quickly, we go to the bottom of the first inning here at Joe Robbie Stadium. Here's Ren or Renee Lashman's. Lineup tonight, his 50th birthday tonight. Also, Barris, Diaz, and Sheffield in the first inning. Conine, the cleanup hitter. Terry Pendleton will bat fifth tonight with Andre Dawson in the lineup. Charles Johnson, Chuck Carr, and Pat Rapp, the bottom third of the lineup. Braves defensively, Chipper Jones in left. Jose Oliva will play third base. Everything else is the same, with the exception of Charlie O'Brien getting a start for Steve Avery. Avery makes his second start, a rough start against the Dodgers on April 28th. Three and a third innings, five hits, and three runs. He did strike out five, however. Kilvio Veras takes a strike in the bottom of the first is underway. Veras hitting 190 for the year, but he has stolen five bases. He's a good man to keep off there. Played at Norfolk last year, hit 249. He came over 
last November 29th in the deal for outfielder Carl Everett from the Mets. It's worked out good for both sides. Everett's off to a good start with the Mets. Upstairs, Tavares, one and two. Mario Diaz is next, then Gary Sheffield. Two balls, two strikes. Oddly enough, last year on Rene Latchman's 50th birthday, Steve Avery was starting for the Braves against the Marlins, and how'd we do? Atlanta won that one. The 2 2. Swung, hot shot, good play by the Lemmer. One out. Boy, he can pick it over there. He is a fine little player. One away. That ball was sharply hit. Highway robbery by Lemke. He's got a great streak going defensively, too. He takes a hit away from the speedy leadoff man. Good to keep him off the sacks. But Mark Lemke, 71 straight games coming into tonight's play since he made an error. Here's Mario Diaz hitting a 286, a homer three RBI. Strike called outside corner. Avery works in a big hurry. Low and away. Baltimore beat Milwaukee today 5-2. Kansas City shut out Minnesota 6-0. Detroit beat Cleveland 4-3. Tonight, Boston at New York, Oakland at California. In the National League, the Giants beat the Padres 5 4 in San Diego. Right back where it came from. And an easy second out. Diaz is retired. Here's Gary Sheffield. He's had good fortune against Avery. Eight out of 24, a home run included. Marlins scuffling a little bit starting the season 1 and 6, 0 oh 4 here at home. But the schedule has not been kind to them. One more game here with the Braves here of course but then they go on the road and play Montreal for four games. There's a birthday boy. He's a pretty good manager. I think I do too. All the way to the backstop one ball no strikes. Jeff Conine on deck but there are two out in the inning. Two and oh. Lance was talking before the ball game. He says, I know we're going to be okay. Just we've got to get our pitchers straightened out or starting pitching because we're not the type team that can give other teams a lot of base runners with the walks. Just missed inside. Avery wanted that pitch. It's three and oh. And Sheffield will probably get the green light here, I would guess. Be careful, Steve Arino. Three and one. Good idea. Didn't throw him a fastball. He was careful. Fine baseball writer Evan Grant of Florida to today wants to be remembered to his parents looking in tonight in Atlanta. Very readable writer. Three balls, one strike. Fly ball right field, no carry to it. Justice has to come in. He broke his bat, sawed him off, inning over. So both teams go in order in the first, and at the end of an inning, we have no score in the ball game. Threat of rain bubbling up here in Miami as Fred McGriff leads off the second inning. Very cloudy and overcast. Hopefully we'll get the game in and get out of here and get home. Let up high and away. One ball, no strikes. McGriff last night fooled me and a lot of other people with a long blast off the clock in deep left center field. The shift is on for Florida, and there's a strike over the inside corner. Pendleton is playing shortstop. I just soon he pushed a bunt down the third baseline. Get the inning start. Leading off the inning. But he had other things on his yeah. mind. It's one and two. First night of the series, he popped one up right down the third baseline. Pendleton made a nice over the shoulder catch, and then he almost sliced a double down the line that just missed landing fair. David Justice waits on deck. He must have heard about us the other night on radio saying that Dwight Smith was the sharpest dresser on the team. That outfit he was wearing tonight. GQ. 
Looked sharp. He sure did. The guy almost dressed as well as the announcers. Mm -hmm. Broken bat grounder foul. Fred will get some more lumber while he's doing that. Leo Mazzoni asked that we send some get well greetings to his aunt and uncle out in Western Maryland. Uncle Tom and Aunt Mary. I want you to know that Leo's thinking about you and hope you're feeling better. Marquise Grissom is the Braves' new leadoff man, and he leads off a new season of Chop Talk, too, as the subject of the May cover story. Get the scoop on a true hometown hero in the Braves' official magazine. Call 1-800-700-CHOP or look for Chop Talk on newsstands. The pitch to Fred. Low and away. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody on. Second inning. Look out. He's gotten hit once in this series and had to skip the rope that time. Full count, three and two. Pat Rapp's last start against the Braves in the middle of the summer last year. He came out of the ball game actually leading four to three, but the Braves rallied at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium and he got no decision wound up with an ERA of 5.59 against the Braves on the season. Fred out in front of another one hits a foul still three and two. It's McGriff Justice and Oliva the first three here in the second inning the news on Ryan Klesko by the way is better tonight potentially than it was 24 hours ago. And now they're hopeful that he'll be able to swing the bat in about two weeks. Line, but whoa, it got by Veris. I was about to say the shift paid off, but he gave that a little Ole shot. We'll see how they score it. He really wanted no part of that little darling, and it's going to be called a single. The fans don't like it. Well, you, you never like to see this happen, but if you're standing in the way of that missile, you might have a tendency to try to play that short hop off to the side. It's a hit and here's Justin. Boy, he made an outstanding defensive play on Terry Pendleton last night that may have turned the game around. I told him in the clubhouse today one of the best plays I've seen him make since I've been here. Low and away, one ball, no strikes. He did two things. One, he made the catch, obviously, but the other thing was that he had a better angle on the ball than Grissom was going to have running away from the infield and he called Marquise off. So some good communication, too. Right at the 404 foot mark. 2 0. Tough to pitch behind this Atlanta lineup. Got a little shift on for David, too. Not as drastic as for Fred. They'd like to turn a double play, but you can see how close up the middle Diaz is playing. Tap toward first. That is a foul ball. Conine fielded it with a foot on the bag. Rap had trouble against left hand hitters last year. 18 mark as a matter of fact. Right he's barely 200. He did have two complete games and a shutout in 25 make it 23 starts for the Marlins. Downstairs and he's behind again three and one the count. If you like seeing a lot of pitchers you're really going to enjoy watching these Marlins. If the year is like it's been to this point in this series boy they have really struggled with their control. A lot of walks plus behind a lot of other hitters. The three one. There goes Fred. Little chopper down the third baseline. Tough play Pendleton. Great bare hand pick up. Got it. Good play by Pendleton. If he doesn't make that play perfectly he never gets his man. And Terry would tell you that you don't know how tough that was. His arm is bothering him a little bit, Skip. He said it's, it's like what he usually goes through at this stage of spring training, a little bit of a dead arm. He said it's real hard for me to get much on the ball, but he got enough just to get David. And no argument, he did get him. Here's Jose Oliva, two out of four for the year, a home run included. That was a rocket shot out in Los Angeles the other day. Runner in scoring position, one out. They shade him just slightly toward left field. And I hope that turns out to be the correct way to play him because if he uses the whole park he can be a very tough hitter when he tries to 
yank everything to left, he runs into trouble. Pitch him away again, and he takes it again. Two and oh, he's behind another hitter. He Oliva, a, two out of two against Ramp in his career, a home run included. Sorry, Skip. He, he was upset. Oliva was at spring training that Chipper more or less was given the job, and he had no chance to win it. Now he's got an opportunity to play quite a bit. Let's see if he can make the most of it. Breaking ball, a strike. Oliva didn't think so. Good pitch by Ramp, though. Off speed breaking ball with a 2 0 count. So it's now two and one. A lot of room down the right field line for Oliva. But he tried to pull an outside pitch and dribbled it foul. That's what'll happen. Two and two. He made an outstanding play last night defensively in the ninth inning. A hard hit ball right at him to start a double play in the ninth inning that helped Klontz get out of some early trouble. He's got very good hands at third base. And doesn't show a strong arm, but he gets rid of the ball. About as quickly as any third baseman I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Two balls, two strikes. Braves got him from the Texas Rangers for Charlie Liebrand. Got it. Again, he tried to pull an outside pitch. Strikeout number two for Rep. Charlie O'Brien, four out of five against this guy with a homer. Went up and away. Might have even been a ball, and Jose couldn't reach it. So Charlie O'Brien stands in. He's 0 for 1 on the year. Outside, so far, Ramp has lived a charmed life. He's been behind every hitter, but he's battled back to wriggle off the hook. It's not just the walks, it's the advantage you give the hitter. When you throw cripple pitches to him. On the corner, he painted the black. O'Brien didn't think so. And the count is even one and one on the umpires. Well, there's just, this is a two out situation. The umpires did not have the benefit of spring training. And it might take them a little time to get zeroed in. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, I thought Terry Tata did a good job last night behind the plate. Very few arguments. But it wasn't like they went to uh, West Palm Beach for a mini camp or anything. I was afraid they were going to send us back there for another two weeks. <laughs> Call an umpire's timeout. Three balls and a strike. The Lemmer waits to hit next. Yeah, three and one's the count. Scoreboard says there's no count yet, but I don't believe that's the case. On the corner, full count. At least Rapp, when he's fallen behind, has made some good pitches to avoid giving up a run or any free passes. He's going to have to do it again. We do a payoff pitch to the Atlanta catcher. McGriff edges away, and here we go. Good cut, fouled it back. Ramp gets a new baseball. Charlie looking away, got the pitch away, and almost came out of his shoes going after that pitch. I wonder if they'll stay outside. You see a fine looking defensive catcher working for the Marlins tonight in young Charles Johnson. He looks like a good one. Look out, that got him up in the shoulder of the helmet. I think the shoulder. It was a curveball. And O'Brien just trots on down to first. He's okay. That's the fourth hit batter of this series. They tried to go inside to lock him up if he was going to hang out over the plate and try to cover the outside corner. They wanted him to flinch on this. They just didn't expect to hit him. But you're right. Just glancing blow off the shoulder or forearm. He's all right. Easy for me to say. Tommy Glavin, by the way, hit by a pitch last night on the top of the foot. He said it felt like it was really going to hurt when it happened, but he said it wasn't too bad, and I'm okay today. The Lemmer bats with two on and two out. Mark hitting an even 200, a homer four RBI. 
McGriff at second, O'Brien at first. They shade Lemke into left center field. If he pulls one down the line, two runs might score. That's low. One ball, no strikes. Big Steve Avery would hit next. The Phillies in town tomorrow night. Kent Merker against Tyler Green, 740 game. Over the outside corner, it's one and one. Saturday night, John Smoltz against Mike Mims. Sunday afternoon, Greg Maddox and Kurt Schilling. That'll be a good one. And Monday, Tom Glavin against David West. And then we go to New York. And three with the Metsies. Just missed outside. Two balls, one strike. Sheffield way over in right center. Nowhere near. Lemke's done a good job of putting the ball in place, Skip. He's had 25 at bats, only one strikeout. In fact, the Braves had some pretty good eyes lately. This series, especially, of course, with 16 walks, but they have walked 40 times already in seven games. Quite a high number for them. The 3 1. On the corner at the knees, full count. Now the runners will go with the payoff pitch here in the second inning. The stretch. They're running. He missed outside, and the bases are loaded. You got the pitcher hitting, but you got the bases loaded. That's the 17th walk of this series by Marlin pitchers who have hit. What is it three or four four and nine of those guys have scored Avery in a spot he can really help himself and he'll jump on that first pitch if it's close first pitch fastball he had a pretty good cut but fouled it away 0 and 1. McGriff and Pendleton talk things over at third base. Pick off play at third. Got it. I don't know what he was trying to do, but he got picked off, and that really hurt. He was trying to bluff and draw his attention to distract him a little bit and Pendleton snuck in there. Terry had just gone to the mound to talk to Rapp. Maybe it was about just that situation and they got Fred and we'll go to the bottom of the second. Braves blow a golden opportunity in the top of the second inning come up empty. We head to the bottom of the second inning here at Joe Robbie Stadium. Time to check out the turtle wax leaderboard. Tonight subject the National League slugging percentage leaders Barry Larkin at the top of the list and the leadoff man for the Marlins as we go to the bottom of the second Jeff Conine in fourth place he's got four homers and nine RBIs. Meanwhile back at the game Conine leads it off. And courts one into left field Blouser a great play but no throw. So the Marlins have their first base runner. On that McGriff play, what happened was, just to put it simply, you saw a real good player make a real bad play. He was trying to draw a balk, I think, from Pat Rapp, and he got trapped off third a little too far, and I'm sure very embarrassed about it with the bases loaded. Terry Pendleton, three hits last night. He's hitting 308 for the year. He's already a popular favorite here, and he will continue to be. Took a shot at right field, lashed it foul into the seats. Terry shaved his head, and an enterprising radio reporter went rushing up to him the other day and said, Is this shaved head a sign of your commitment to really pull these Marlins together? So, no, actually, it's because it's about 100 degrees hotter every day here than it is in Atlanta. <laughs> the broadcaster was somewhat nonplussed. A little low, one and one. Terry told me before the game he knew that ball he hit last night was not going out of the ballpark. He said I was really mad at myself 
because it was a pitch that I normally drive and I knew I got under it just a little bit. Well he hit it 400 feet. I know but he said he knew when he hit it to that in that direction that it was not going to go out of the park. Well I'm glad he turned out to be right. Mm -hmm. His 400 foot drive to the 404 mark a little short. You hit that same shot to the 385 mark where's it go. It's out of here baby. Good. High fly ball, pretty well hit right field, but David is back waiting. Co nine halfway, one up. You know, I join you, Drew. I'm glad the umpires are back. One thing I don't understand about their deal: all umpires get a twenty thousand dollar bonus, which is fine for them. But what I don't understand: if you're the very best umpire in, in the league, you get twenty thousand. And if you're the very worst umpire in the league, you get 20,000. So where is your incentive to try to improve yourself if you're in that lower end of the spectrum? That's one area I wish they had addressed. I wish there was some kind of review board that if you're going to be an umpire in the big leagues, you have to really work hard to stay. Dawson way out in front. Hits the breaking ball foul on one. Big league ball players, if they somehow lose some of their skills, they don't stay in the big leagues. I think the same should be done at least in some type of review of an independent survey just to make sure these guys stay on their toes keep hustling keep doing the things that got them to the big league. rather than do it the way they do it just add 20,000 everybody's salary and then you've avoided that problem. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever asks us we have all these answers but phone didn't ring did it now. Pop foul back and out of play. Dawson has makes his home here born and raised in Miami and is already a popular Marlin favorite. He's at the end of what is really a great career. He broke in pro ball in 1975. Greg Maddox says he's the greatest player he ever played with. Just missed the outside corner. He's two out of 16 in his career against Avery a home run included. I'll tell you with his knees there's no cartilage left. It takes him about three hours before and after every game icing them and putting those stimulant things on them just to get ready to try to play. Maybe an even higher compliment from Maddox. He said he's the type guy you hope your son grows up to be. Yeah like. he's just a he's a pro. Spent the last two years with the Red Sox. Look out. Knocked him off the plate a little bit. Two balls, two strikes. New York at Montreal tonight. The Phillies at Cincinnati. Houston at St. Louis. Those games just getting going. Line to the left center field. Grissom on the run. Can't make the catch. He lost it in the lights. Conine should score. Dawson around second. He's on his way to third. He will stop there. It'll be a triple and I would bet the mortgage that Grissom lost it in the lights. He was there he was in a position that he was going to make the catch and had to pull up and then he just reached for the ball and it was pretty obvious right here that he lost it and he just made a stab at it. He's really lucky he didn't get hit with that yeah. ball. Yeah, he was. Remember, this is a football stadium configured for baseball, so the light standards are not in the positions that you would normally find for a baseball park. That's a good point. I hadn't even thought of that. Here's Charles Johnson. Got his first hit of the year last night. He's hitting just 048, but long term, they're confident this guy is the answer behind the plate. Line in the right center field. On comes Justice. He won't get there. Another run is it? A little looper. So Avery, the victim of some bad pitching luck here. A ground ball to deep short. A line drive that should have been caught, and a little bloop, and he's behind two nothing. And Chuck Carr will be the batter. Carr 
off to a slow start with the bat. Curve ball low, one ball, no strikes. A nightmarish inning for Avery. Chuck Carr's nightmarish start has dropped him in the order to the eighth spot. That's why Barris is leading off now, and Barris is doing a good job of getting on base. Swung at a bad ball that time. And the count evens one and one. Runner at first, one out. Check swing inside. Two balls, one strike. Rojas still the third base coach for the Marlins, but they've had a shakeup in the rest of their staff. Three and one. say that they did. Lemke took the throw. That was a sick looking hit and run if that's what it was. Tonight following the Braves game the NBA playoffs continue on TBS. It's game four in the Western Conference first round series between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Seattle Supersonics. Lakers lead it two to one and look to make Seattle a first round upset victim for the second year in a row right here on TBS tonight. And the inning is over, but two runs score on three hits. Nobody's left. At the end of two, two nothing Marlin. Steve Avery was at the plate when McGriff was picked off third, and he'll be back there again as we go to the third inning. Two nothing Marlins is the score. I understand his frustration after the Tough inning gave up two runs on an infield hit, a ball lost in the lights, and a bloop to right. And fans might be saying, is he mad at Marquise Grissom? And the answer is absolutely not. He's mad at the circumstance, but he knows that's part of this game. He had a home run cut, but missed it badly. A breaking ball down and in 0 and 1. Oh and 2. Dawson's first triple since 1993, middle of the year at Minnesota. And knowing about Andre's knees, I'd be willing to guess that about the time he approached second, geez, I wish he'd have knocked that ball down <laughs> so I could stop. Because it really hurts him to run. Avery's disposed of, one away. And here's Marquise Grissom. He was a strikeout victim his first time. Don't forget Sunday the Braves hold their annual meet and greet day which is a, another way of saying camera day presented by likes hot dog fans invited to bring their cameras to take to the field for a visit with Braves players and coaches gates open early on Sunday. Meet and greet day starts at 10:15. you may enter any gate once inside the ballpark head to the gate queue ramp. Tickets call Ticketmaster 249 6400. Likes hot dogs, though. Maybe that's why they called it meet and greet. Maybe so, Joe. Not very likely, but possible. A ball and a strike. Grissom now one out of 19 against this guy. Pat Rapp into the wind on the pitch. At the knees, had him bailing out. His oh. I'm sorry, his delivery is a little bit like Bobby Witt's last night. He throws across his body when he makes his stride to the plate. Steps a little more toward the third base or the uh, right-handed coach batter's box instead of right at the plate. He's out of the Giants organization. Marquise pops a foul and out of play.
his stride and his step a little bit closed has to throw across that front leg. It's not the ideal way to throw it puts a little added mm -hmm. wear and tear on the arm. But you got to do what's good for you. Grissom just did stay alive on an off speed curveball. You were talking about Charles Johnson's defensive abilities skip in this series alone. I can't count how many times he has saved Marlins pitchers on balls in the dirt with runners on base. Nothing's gotten by him yet. And he's Fred McGriff's nephew. Broken bat grounder to second. Veras gets him by a step two down. So Rapp will pitch well in his first start of the year is pitching well in his second. Two down for Jeff Blauser, who rolled the first his first time. Charles Johnson out of the University of Miami. His dad's a high school baseball coach. Blauser stands in there. So far, not so good. But it's early. Steve Rag, breaking ball, 0 and 1. The Braves are off to this great start when frankly Grissom and Blauser have done almost nothing. The good news is they are proven pros and you know they're going to get their hits. And when they start getting them things might really get joyous. When they're setting the table for Jones and McGriff and Justice and Olivo or Klesko or whoever. Oh and two. The one thing Jeff's done though even though his average is only 200 coming in is that he has been on base with some base on balls. He's walked six times. His on base percentage 375. Down the right field line Sheffield a long way to run. He's not going to get there. Blauser is going to turn and cruise into second. Here's the throw and he slides in safely with a two out double. Nice job of hitting that and played in right center and he just Skied one down the line to give Chipper Jones a chance to hit in the inning. Like he hit it right off the end of the bat. Just barely got a piece of it. He rounded first like he was going to be able to glide into second base. But with this guy's arm, nothing is a sure thing. And he had to turn on the Jets just a little bit at the end to make sure he got into second base safely. See if they can get another two out hit. At the knees inside corner 0 and 1 the Marlins leave after the game for Montreal that'll be a lengthy flight. Then they get to go through customs and our bus rent. 0 and 2. And then they'll be in the gay Paris of North America Montreal Quebec. He got him on three straight and the inning is over. Four strikeouts for Ramp. One hit, no runs, no errors, one left. Bottom of the third inning. Marlins lead it 2 nothing. Playoff time on TBS. Van Exel and Sabalas have put the Lakers up 2-1 on the Sonics. Will Peyton and Kemp come on strong or go home early again? Sonics Lakers tonight at 10:30 Eastern on TBS. Sunday, a TBS premiere. It's like nothing you've ever done after before. Indy! Don't look at it. Harrison Ford, Raiders of the Lost Ark, 10:35 Eastern Sunday. Turn to TBS. Let's take a look at the Armor All Tire Protected Scoreboard. Finals that are in France. San Francisco beat San Diego 5-4. Melvin Nieves hit another home run for the Padres. Only a couple of other games underway. No score there. Houston at St. Louis a little bit later on. We'll give you the American League after an out. Meanwhile, back at the game, Pat Rapp pops up. And Mark Lemke takes care of Pat Rapp. One down. American League scores. Got a few other finals there. Baltimore salvaged a win against Milwaukee. Kansas City shut out Minnesota behind Kevin Apier who's pitching very well for the Royals Detroit over Cleveland Tigers finally won one got home runs from Gibson and Higginson Boston and New York Oakland and California a little bit later 
Meanwhile, back at the game, Kilvio Veras will be the batter. Scores, man, scores. I know. Keep everybody in form. That's good. Around America. <laughs> Veras grounded the second his first time. We try to weave in an occasional pitch between the. See, I bet you didn't know Melvin Yavis hit a homer. Today. I did too. I told you that earlier. You told me about the one he hit yesterday. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, and one in the count. Well, then he hit his second today. Barry Bonds hit one today as well. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Okay. Don't you feel better? <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the game, Barris waits and fouls one away. A ball and a strike. guy's pretty pesky. He's an irritating little player. He steps out of the box all the time, but he's. He didn't think too much of that. Takes a little walk to the other side of the batter's box. At 249 last year, if he could hit that for these guys, they'd be very happy with him because he's a fine defensive player. He can run very well. Second in the International League last year in stolen bases with 40. He knew at that time and just. Keeps on trucking. Avery records a second strikeout. Burned the corner on him, and Barris, maybe looking inside, guessed wrong. He was leaning the right direction. Diaz tapped to the mound his first time. One ball, no strikes. Gary Sheffield on deck, but two are out in the inning. A ball and a strike. Mario Diaz told me before the ball game, he said, I've had some older veteran people, coaches, what have you, tell me, he said that playing against the Braves now is like going in and playing against the Mets back in the 70s against the Seavers, the Kuzmans, John Matlack. He said, if you get three or four hits in the series, you ought to feel pretty good. Off the end of the bat, Lemke's going to feel it's going to be close. Got him, inning over. So Avery has about an easy, as easy an inning as you can have as he gets him one, two, three. But at the end of three, the Marlins enjoy a two-nothing lead. Now there's a Braves fan. This telecast is authorized under rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or of the pictures are descriptions. They've changed this stupid thing. Of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. It's even worse than it used to be. Here's Joe with a play by play. <laughs> Thanks. Fred McGriff leads it off and takes a strike. I'd like, kind of like to hear that again. <laughs> so would I. I'd like to do it right. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. Fred aboard with a base hit his first time up. Takes one low. He was at first. Moved to second after O'Brien was hit by a pitch. Lemke walked to load him up, but then Fred got picked off third in the inning. Moves out of the way of that one. It's two and two and one as the Marlins have the shift on again. Three infielders on the right side. Terry Pendleton playing shortstop. Change up. Bounced foul, two and two. Fred now eight for 24. Has only struck out one time. Picked up six walks. That's to the left side, but Pendleton has it measured. Ron hands it for the out. David Justice will be the batter. He was robbed of an infield hit on a nice barehanded play by Pendleton in the second inning. David off to a terrific start. Came in hitting 333, two homers, eight RBIs. Perhaps doing a little better job here the last two innings, Skip, throwing that first pitch strike in there. He's using his breaking ball more. Sure makes life easier, doesn't it? For him, I mean. Uh-huh. 
Then he comes back with a fastball and two and two. Again, the shift not quite as prominent on Justice as it was on McGriff. But they're giving him the third base line if he wants it. Hits that one off his foot. Hopefully it got part of that shin guard he wears on his right leg. Now David's not opposed to dropping one down. He tries to get a little bun hit once in a while. He's a good bunter. Uh -huh. He just doesn't do it very often. He's got two strikes on him here though and not a good time to do that. Talking to himself a little bit at the plate. One and two. He always does, doesn't he? Little reminders. Come on, baby. Mm -hmm. They have a ping pong table set up in the clubhouse here at Joe Robbie Stadium. He was the self-proclaimed champion yesterday. So nobody even challenged him. Two and two. Just missed. And that'll run it full. You'd think there'd be some pretty good matches with a good hand eye coordination, professional baseball players at. See how close this was. Pretty close. Right at the target, too. Payoff pitch. We'll have to wait. Through Charlie O'Brien, a 3 2 breaking ball. Let's see if he does the same to the left handed hitter. Line foul. Looked like he took a little off his fastball. Rap last year, 133 innings. Gave up 132 hits. Three two pitch again. Breaking ball, line toward left field. Dawson with a late start. We'll have to play it on a hop. He had David play deep. And that ball lined right at him and he got a late break on it. Wonder if the same thing happened to him that happened to Grissom. It looked like he just froze when it was hit. And didn't know quite where it was and it could have been the lights again. Again it was a similar line drive. And he knew he wasn't going to get to it so then had to give ground to make sure it didn't bounce past him. So Justice at first, one out for Jose Oliva, who struck out his first time up, even though he started off ahead in the count 2-0. and oh. Did you know that not only is it meet and greet day Sunday at the ballpark, but it's also... What else? A Toontown Sunday. Whoa. Swing and a miss, one and one. What's Toontown Sunday, buddy? Ballpark will be filled with cartoon characters of all shapes and sizes. Not just in the booth? <laughs> I got your booth. And activities will be featured throughout the day. The 1 1. Off the end of the bat towards center. Chuck Carr comes on. He makes the catch. He'll try to double up Justice. The throw. No, it didn't get him. Throw was a little bit off the mark. It pulled Conine off the base. And Justice was able to get back. Two down. Sometimes outfielders get fooled on a ball like that that hits off the end of the bat. Because it sounds like it's hit harder than it is. This time a base runner got fooled. Justice thought that ball was going to go over his head and had to slam on the brakes and just did get back. In fact, a good throw would have gotten it. Two outs, it'll be left to Charlie O'Brien. I don't know what cartoon Hello. characters will be there, do you? The Anna Barbera. Which, one, which ones are they? Yogi Bear and that'd be like uh, Fred Flintstone, Wilma, Barney. Those guys. Boo Boo. Don't know if Boo Boo will be there. He had been on the DL, you know. Oh no. Yeah, he, he got hit a boo boo? Yeah, boo Boo had, had a boo boo? Got hit with a picnic basket. Nice block by Johnson. He does a fine job back there. Who, boo Boo? No, Johnson. Johnson. Charlie O'Brien 0 for 1 on the year. He's walked three times and he's been hit by a pitch tonight. A 
Pirates justice at first. Two outs. Foul back out of play. Two nothing Marlins. We're in the fourth. O'Brien came in to play against Rapp tonight. Four for five with a homer. Slow curve, a little high. It's two and one. Mark Lemke would be next, but there's two down. Another slow curve. That one's in there, and it's even at two and two. if Justice gets the green light to go here two and two. A lot of room for O'Brien down the right field line. They expect Charlie to try to pull the ball. David's not running. It's lined up the middle and out of the reach of Varus. David will hold it second. O'Brien with a base hit puts runners at first and second. That'll bring up Lemke. It's funny how some hitters have some pitchers numbers. Varus came close. He's got good range out there. Lemke with a two-out chance. Charlie now five for six against Rapp. Lemke battled his first time up, drew a walk to load the bases. That was back in the second inning. Avery came up, had an 0-2 count on him, and then suddenly a quick snap throw to third, and they picked Fred McGriff off third base to end the inning. And the Marlins came back with two runs of their own in the bottom of the inning. That's where we are, 2-0. Out of play. That'll do some damage. And they are making them count. 23 of their first 42 runs this year have come with two outs. Good off speed pitch has Lemke in the hole 0 and 2. Good delivery by Rapp on that pitch. Had Mark way out in front. He's got to choke up a little bit. Guard the plate. Rap waste one. It's one and two. Pat Rap, a 15th round draft choice back in 89 by the Giants out of southern Mississippi. A ball and two strikes to Limmer. Almost got by Johnson, but he is really quick back there for a big guy. Uh, he's a terrific looking young catcher. Rapp had, and his wife have one son, and they named him Ryan after Nolan Ryan. Another right hand pitcher who's had a fair career in this game. It's another guy that pitched for the Mets. That's Started right. his career there in the when the late, late great 60s. Rube Walker was the pitching coach up there. Got him swinging. Good job by Rapp to come back after putting a couple of runners on. Braves get two hits, strand them. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Marlins still on top, two zip. Don Sutton's going to try to talk that guy out of that hat. This is what's on deck for the Braves, brought to you by Armorall Deck Protector. Tomorrow night, the Phillies and Braves, 735, Kent Merker against Tyler Green. Saturday night, same two teams, John Smoltz and Mike Mims. Sunday, Greg Maddox and Kurt Schilling. And Monday, Tom Glavin and David West. Now back to the game and Joe Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Part of the order for the Marlins, Sheffield, Conine, and Pendleton in the Marlin half of the fourth inning. That's the picnic area for Yogi and Boo Boo out there. Joe Robbie Stadium. Sheffield flying to right his first time up. Avery has fanned two. Gave up three hits in the second inning that led to two runs. Low again, 2 0. Oh. Did we ever mention that Mike Sharperson joined the team today? The I don't think we did. Former Dodger infielder, he's taken Ryan Klesko's place on the roster. Right hand hitting infielder. Hitting over 400 at Richmond. Yeah, he was tearing it up. Uh, he makes his home in Stone Mountain, Georgia. 
Christie worked a little quick in his wind up there for Sheffield who steps out. Two oh pitch change up misses outside three and oh Sharperson had 16 RBIs in 18 games before being called up. And Mike. Three oh pitch walked him. Sheffield was ahead in the count three and oh in the first inning before Avery was able to get him on the fly ball and that's the first free pass issued by Steve tonight. Conine single to get things started in the second inning. It was an infield hit to deep short. He came around to score on a line drive by Andre Dawson to center field that was lost in the lights by Grissom. Dawson wound up with a triple. Quick throw to first Conine back. Fred did a good job there to save an error for Avery. Got him picked off. Fred throw quick down to second, and they got him. Nice job there by Avery, and sometimes skip that throw to second base. Not the easiest for first baseman. You got the runner between you and the shortstop. Fred did a good job of stepping in to have a direct route. And you don't have much time to step in very far to make the throw. A lot of times, that throw will bounce off a runner's shoulder, and he winds up at third. Sheffield guessed wrong. And he's out. Conine takes a strike and it's 0 1. Out of play, 0 2. Conine, 5 for 12 now, lifetime against Avery after his base hit. Goes right after him, but misses inside. I think one thing that the Marlins miss a little bit, Skip, would be a bona fide cleanup hitter. Conine's probably better suited to hit fifth or even sixth in the lineup. They need that one big bopper right in the middle of their lineup that they know is a cleanup guy every night. If they could play Dawson every day, he might be able to fill that yeah. role, but I don't know if his knees will allow it. Plus, his best position is either left or right, and that's where they've got Sheffield and Conine. So. Two and two now to Conine. Good fastball. Locked him up. Avery with his third strikeout. Get him looking for something away, and there's not much he can do in there. Perfect pitch at the knees, inside edge. Right at O'Brien's target, too. Terry Pendleton flied out to David Justice his first time up. Had a good night last night. Three for five, an RBI, and just missed hitting a big home run late in the ball game. Tries to lay off the fastball, but I believe Eric Gregg called it a strike anyway. 0 and 1. See which stance he uses this time. This looks like number 417B. This is game eight stance. 1 and 1. Opens his stance a little bit this time for Avery, and the changeup has him lunging. It's one and two. Terry has faced most of his former teammates in the starting rotation after his days in St. Louis, but he has not faced Avery before tonight. The one and two pitch, a little high. Braves play Terry a little bit toward right field. Grissom has him shaded over in right center. Chipper about straight away and left. And he rips it down the left field line, but foul. And that quickly gets Charlie O'Brien out from behind home plate to remind Steve, don't, don't hang that breaking ball down and into this guy, okay? Terry Pendleton hit a line drive like that the first night we were in here and it hit a little youngster who turned out to be okay. Well, that was strike two on him and he was so upset. Mm -hmm. He was absolutely unprepared to hit. He looked terrible striking out. He was so worried about the youngster. Really shook him up 
Off speed pitch again. This time he gets a piece of it into right center, but Grissom with a good jump there to put it away. And the Marlins go in order thanks to the pickoff play by Avery of Gary Sheffield. And we head to the fifth inning. Marlins on top, two to nothing. John McClain, NYPD. On a good day, he's a great cop. But you don't like me because I'm white. I don't like you because you're going to get me killed. <laughs> On a bad day, he's the best there is. On May 19th, McClain is back. You got a triple-A card? Bruce Willis, die hard. This time with a vengeance. Rated R. Starts Friday, May 19th at theaters everywhere. To the top of the fifth we go. Avery, Grissom, and Blouser do up for Atlanta. Steve struck out his first time up. Marlins leading it 2-0. Steve shows bunt. Takes one for ball one. Well, Greg Maddox bounced back from his chicken pox pretty quick. Certainly showed no signs of being affected by it with his two good outings. Evens a cat at one and one. I'm hoping the same will be true for my little Gabe guy Simpson. at home. Yeah, get well, Gabe. He's got the chicken pox. Hope he's feeling better. Two and one to Avery. Get well enough to come on out and infect me before the next road trip. I don't want to go to New York anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Little slow roller. Conine will toss to wrap. Recovers nicely. One out. You know, looking at Greg Maddox there in the in the dugout talking to him the other day one of the things he says he gets a kick out of these days is watching the game and seeing what he can pick up from opponents pitchers hitters this guy's always studying the opponent try to find a weakness somewhere I enjoyed being with him so much after the game uh, Tuesday night the one he won he was so upset he had walked a couple of relatively weak hitters without power and you would have thought he lost he was so angry with himself he said, absolutely no excuse for that and that's it's that kind of determination that makes a good player a great one and brother he is there's a lot of knowledge right there those two mm -hmm. talking pitching Grissom stands in 0 for 2 a strikeout and a ground out well the key there I mean I think sometimes our starting pitchers they get the reputation of being good on the mound they play a lot of golf they have a lot of fun but that's a part of the game that is not discussed very much the fact that they do talk baseball a lot and share information with each other that helps make make all of them good players and when they're playing golf there's not a game so they can't learn any I mean there's not a baseball game so they can't learn any. that's drilled does Dawson have room he leaps and makes the catch nice play by the Hawk two down Marquise hits this ball hard. He's starting to swing the bat a little bit better, though his average doesn't reflect it. And Dawson makes a good play. Dawson was always a good outfielder. Oh, well, before good his arm. knees went on him, he could do everything. Run. Blouser has grounded out and doubled. It went off the end of the bat down the right field line for a two-out double in the third. Remember when Montreal had Dawson and Cromarty and Ellis? Ellis Valentine. Valentine. Mm -hmm. That was going to be their outfield for 15 years. Didn't work out that way, but. Breaking ball is high. It's one and one. Then Tim Raines came along. And then Marquise Grissom. And now Rondell White and those guys, they keep coming. They're still not a bad ball club at all. Mm -mm. Tony Tarasco off to a great start. One one pitch to Blouser. Sky to center. Carr is there. Braves go in order in the top of the fifth inning. Ernie and Don will be coming your way for the remainder of the game here on TBS. Our score after four and a half, Marlins two, Braves nothing. We're going to the bottom half of the fifth. Don Sutton, Ernie Johnson with you, and Sut, a uh, pretty good pitcher's duel tonight. Yes, it is. Pat Rapp, we weren't expecting this much out of him. You knew Avery was going to pitch well. Steve, after the one kind of shaky inning, has thrown it well. But uh, after seeing all the long time it's taken, a lot of hits, a lot of walks, it's good to see this. And a legend steps in, Andre Dawson, first batter. 
And the curveball's over. Dawson, the first time up, tripled. It appeared that Marquis might have lost it in the, the ball in the lights, and it scored a run. Missed the fastball. Yeah, normally, if it stays in the yard, Marquis will catch it, but you could see him flinch on that. Definitely it passed through the lights. He had a problem with it. Fastball outside. One and two. It's Dawson and Johnson followed by Carr. Four hits for Atlanta and only three for Florida. That's well hit. Base hit left. 40 year old Andre Dawson. Well, you know, if you're. Uh Renee Latchman, you obviously want to get him some at bats, but you have a very difficult time. You have an outfield of Conine, Carr, and Sheffield in right. Dawson is a right or a left fielder. Greg Coburn is a good hitting first baseman. It's a difficult task. It's a situation you like to have, but it's tough for manager Latchman to get the at bats for that man that he'd like to. Perez starts throwing in their pen. We are in the bottom half of the fifth. I don't know if Rapp is through. I kind of hope he is. Well, he threw a lot of pitches early in the ballgame, but he's really settled down. You don't know what their plan is for if he's on a pitch count or what. But probably what they might do is they might have the left hander ready, send him out there. Then if anybody gets on or may make the change. Right on through the fastball. Dawson at first base. Got to feel a little elderly at times when he looks at Charles Johnson because Andre played baseball at Florida A&M with Charles Johnson's dad. And the pitch. Hit foul. Last night Do uh, Johnson got his first hit of the year. He had gone 0 for 19. Got a nice ovation too. He is a youngster from Fort Pierce, went to the University of Miami. A lot of people learn he think it's tougher to play at home than it is to spend your career someplace else. I think it is. Believe it or not, not everyone is pulling for you when you're playing at home. You've got some people out there that kind of hope you fall on your face. Fastball up and he struck him out. We got the, the NBA playoffs round first round leader you see the Lakers lead at two to one Seattle versus L.A. tonight following the Braves game the NBA will continue it's game four in that series the Lakers now lead at two to one and hope to make Seattle a first round upset victim for the second year in a row good surprise year for the Lakers and their coach today named coach of the year Del Harris congratulations to him he's a good guy Did a fine job over there it's Chucky Carr going back a while Dell Ennis was from Philadelphia he had some good years there but they they got on his case when he wasn't going well and I think to this day Dell Ennis wishes he had played in Boston or Milwaukee or someplace else I think you try so hard when you're playing in front of uh, the home folks Looks like they may go to a pinch hitter, Ernie. That could be the end of the night for Rep. That's Alex Arias who was warming up on deck. Fly ball right. Justice with a catch. It's two down. And Arias is going to hit. Well, you won't find me complaining about this because. Pat Rapp has really settled down and pitched well. The young man has struck out five. It's got to be a real thrill for manager Renee Latchman to see only one walk out of a start. And coming into the night, what they have 16 walks and three hit batsmen. A lot of free tickets. Hard to win when you're issuing those free tickets. Yeah, and especially when they score like last night. Just about every run that the Braves had, the guy that scored it walked. First four last night against Whitman across the plate. Arias batting 100, one for 10. Don't forget the Phillies come into town tomorrow. 
Four game series Friday through Monday. That's a strike on a fastball. All kinds of promotions over the weekend. Meet and greet the Braves on Sunday. Bring your camera along. That's a base hit to right. Dawson makes a turn and he'll come back. He knows better. It's a rocket in right field. That is a single. Runners first and second for Vera. The fact that there was a base runner got Arias this base hit fastball up inside fights it inside out. McGriff standing near the bag not able to get far enough off to catch it if he's at his normal position that's a ho hum routine out as it is there at first and second good thing is there are two outs. And sooner or later Kilby Overis will get ready to hit. He takes his time he is 0 for 2 today. Lemke took a hit away from him first time up. He struck out in the third. Fastball on the outside corner. Boy, Avery is in such a good groove. His mechanics are good. His follow through, he's ending up in the same spot. There are not too many youngsters who came into pro ball. Remember the first time I ever saw him pitch, I thought he used his leverage as well as anybody I'd seen as a youngster. Still got it. Working on that outside corner, but missed. Well, he's got to be in a good frame of mind. Just signed a huge new contract. Yep, somewhere in the neighborhood of four, we understand, mm -hmm. with six zeros behind it. Dot zero zero. One ball, one strike. Two on, two outs, the pitch. Good curveball. I could adjust my standard of living upwards to accommodate that, couldn't you, Ernie? I think so. I think so. By a lot of Brunswick stew and some fish bait. Here's his motion. Watch how he collects on that back leg. The kick is a big one. But he never gets off balance. Now watch the backside come all the way across. He uses every bit of that six foot four frame. One and two. Good balance. Hit foul. Off to the right. Avery has what I would call a very animated delivery. There's a lot of movement in it. But when you watch him rock back. Although there is movement, he never gets helter skelter. He's never off balance or never topples. He always, at one point in his delivery, he always collects his weight on his back leg before he starts forward. Never gets out over the front side. His pitch. A little pop foul out of play off to the right. After the Philly series, the Braves go to New York for three, and then they come home for a nice long 10 game homestand. So we hope to see you at the stadium. Don't forget the Phillies are there through Monday too. An unusual yeah. series against them. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Now the one-two pitch. Just got a piece of it. You know, Avery, it's uh, you, you've got to compare it to some of the great when you watch him throw. This is pretty impressive company right there. He is 25 years old. Arguably the two best left handers you can make an argument for that ever played Koufax and Spahn look where they were at this age so Avery off to a good start you just wish him good health and uh, enough money in the coffers to continue to pay him. And the pitch is hit slowly to short. Bowser goes on to first in time for the out and that'll do it for the Marlins. We move to inning number six to the nothing Florida. CBS presents movies for guys who like movies. Sunday, in the West, you should know by now, there's one man you don't mess with. You want some? Get out of here. Straight up or draped over the saddle, either one. Shouldn't have hit me, Bob. What are you staring at? Clint Eastwood, Joe Kidd. Movies for guys who like movies. Sunday at 7 Eastern, only on TBS. Marlins lead it two to nothing. A look at our Budweiser game summary. Not a whole lot to talk about. Andre Dawson, a couple of hits, one of them a triple in RBI. Charles Johnson single. Braves had a chance to score, but with two outs, Fred McGriff got picked off of third base. 
A couple of runs on five hits for the Marlins. The Braves being shut out on four hits. Perez, a new pitcher. Yorkies Perez. He'll face Chipper Jones, who will turn around and bat right-handed. Perez pitched yesterday, a shutout inning here. He's an animated left-hander. Made a pass through the Braves organization, was traded to the Cubs in a deal that brought by Lecky and Barry Hill down. And there's a hard hit ball to short. Knocked down, picked up, throwing. Still got him. Diaz made the play. That ball was hit so hard it got behind the shortstop, and he still threw out Jones, who runs pretty well. Chipper Jones may have hurt himself on that too when he hit the bag hard. Also, that may have taken a bite out of Diaz. You pointed out that ball hit very hard. Looked like he might have had a little overspin on it too. It was a high fastball, and Chipper Jones can turn those. Right now, Diaz getting a little bit of treatment. Here's another look at it. See if it's not a high fastball. It is. See the overspin? Boy, he just rolled that over. And that ball took a bite out of Diaz, but very alertly stayed with it and made the throw. Maybe a little trouble in Bolivia because that may have hit below the equator. It appears he's going to be okay. Griff will be next. We get a chance now to tell you about the Braves' reduced ticket prices in the upper pavilion area. They've reduced those ticket prices by 50% for all Tuesday through Saturday home games in May and June. Well, that is a value. In other words, a family of four can go to the ball game with the Braves for $10. Try to do that at any other major athletic event. New ticket policy just put in by the Braves today. In the Florida Marlins choir, Mario Diaz is now singing tenor. <laughs> they sometimes say that you rung the bell. <laughs> Here's McGriff with everybody but Pendleton on the right side, and there's a bouncer foul past Pat Corrales. All in one. Atlanta trying for their seventh win of the year. They've lost only one game so far. That was to Los Angeles. The first game on this road trip. Fouled away. That's a gift strike right there, and you love to get that if you're a pitcher. You throw a pitch absolutely not where you want it, high. You hope they don't swing. Tries to check his swing, and you get a free strike out of it, especially against a good hitter like McGriff. Now the 0-2. Down low, and Perez dances back up that hill. Justice is on deck. I've told the story before, but I like to tell it again when I see this shift with everybody but Pendleton on that side. That's the original shift put in against Ted Williams. I don't think anyone else did it until Ted, until Ted Williams started pulling so many. Three infielders on the right side. Of course, and the, they, of course, they asked Williams, why don't you single the left? He said, they didn't pay me to single the left. They pay me to homer to right. And you could pop one down that way. Fred McGriff could almost drop a bunt down there and just walk to first base, but he's not going to do it. Well, a lot of managers thought it wasn't manly to put the shift on, and a lot of hitters thought it wasn't manly to take a shot the other way. Yeah, but you're trying to win a ball game. If I'm a, if it's a tight game, and I'm Mickey Mantle or, or Fred McGriff, and I'm the tying run and I'm leading off the inning, I might drop a bunt down. Anything to get on. I've seen people take one in the shoulder and not move to get on. Well, the way they're bunts there, if Skip could beat it out if he bunted it over there. Well, now let's not get that ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it'd be close. It'd be close. <laughs> Three and two. <laughs> the skipper is sitting over here to the right. One out. Braves are trailing two to nothing. That's bounced out to second. On the first. 
We're talking about records and best records around. Let's take a look at our Hardy's leaderboard, the best record in the major leagues. No surprise if you listen to us before the season, we predicted Colorado was going to have a good Atlanta there and Joe Simpson gloating now as Seattle off to a good start. My favorite city in America to play in, the Milwaukee Brewers, proving proving that a small market can win. This not may not this may not make Bud Selig real happy. Them getting off to that good a start. Shoots his argument. Nice surprise though. It's a good place to play. And he played all of eight games. Yeah. <laughs> you like being in Milwaukee playing. Oh, you? enjoyed it. What a wonderful city. Great people. No ball player has ever been treated better than the Milwaukee Braves. You are the Brewers. As they bounce her foul. One of the most interesting experiences of my life, Ernie, playing there with the Brewers. We had four or five guys that looked like they had just escaped from Attica State Prison. Then we had two older boys in Paul Molitor and Robin Yount, and then the rest of us somewhere in between. Pitch is high. But there was a place there in that city for all of us. And one of my favorite men, God rest his soul, Harvey Keene. What a wonderful guy to be around and to play with. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Line fair down the right field line, and Justice has at least two. He's going to try for three, and he's going to have it. A line drive triple by Justice. He's now two for three. Off a lefty. Good inning by Justice. Now, if you're David Justice and you whistle this ball in the right field corner, the play is in front of you till you get the second. See, that's fair by less than a foot. Here it goes into the corner. Justice rounds first, heads for second. That play is his till he gets to second. Then he has to pick up Jimmy Williams, the coach at third. And what a great job Jimmy Williams does. He doesn't stay at the bag. He goes a good 30 feet down the left field line so that it's an easy pickup for Justice when he rounds second. Nice job. Oliva foul. Just missed the double. You see a lot of coaches on that, Ernie, who stay right there in the coach's box, which makes it awfully difficult. That coach's box inside a third. You can see Jimmy outside of it now. But when Justice hit the bag, it was very natural to make the turn. Watch him look for Jimmy Williams. Watch how easily he picks him up. Jimmy Williams giving him the windmill. See, David didn't even have to change his angle. I pop right side. And it looks like it's going to make the seats. There are so many little things that contribute to a winning ball club and you might not ever see it unless you have a play like that where David being at third might be the difference in the ball game. But Jimmy Williams just by being alert and moving down the line. There's Jimmy. See he was about 20 feet down the line. Now here he comes as a play gets close. He's right there to let David know he's in there. That is a good job of coaching. Some good base running. The 0 2 pitch it off the end of the bat up to first. And Oliva fails to get him in. The Braves strand one. We go to the bottom of the six. It's still two to nothing. Marlin. We're going to the bottom of the sixth inning. Wade Boggs picked up a base hit. He now has 2,400 in the brilliant career. Most of it with the Red Sox. He's playing with the Yankees now. Diaz will lead it off bottom half of the six. We had a graphic up here a while back about wins by Avery at age 25 and Spawn and there was someone else Colfax in there and I wanted to point out at the time but I failed to do it was the fact that Spawn it is so remarkable that he won 363 games in his career and had won only a few at age 25 and the reason was well, he was in the service right. for three years and uh, didn't get a whack at it. You wonder how many he would have won if there hadn't been a war. Wow. He and Bob Feller both lost a lot of good years. He won over 300 after turning 30, didn't he? I think he did. Yeah, he was pitching when he was in his 40s. Here's what we were talking about, Ernie. Eight at 25, right. then take out the three years. So, pretty good chance he did win 300 after eight. Three. Yeah. And Ted Williams lost four years in the service and he had over 500 home runs. A lot of those things are forgotten by people when they when they talk about records. And usually those years that those players lost in the Second World War, most of them were right in their prime. Activity in the Braves bullpen, that's Mark Wohlers. 
Avery, third due up. Next inning. Foul away. Three balls and two strikes. Avery's pitched himself a good ball game. He gave up the leadoff single to Conine in the second. Then Dawson got a triple on a ball that 99 times out of 100 Marquise Grissom will catch. Just lost it in the light. Fly ball right. And Justice will grab it. That's one down. Gary Sheffield. There's some pretty tough right handed hitters in the middle of their lineup. This is one of them. Conine to follow. It is really funny. This is a hitter's ballpark. Folks, it's only 361 feet to left field. That is almost a chip shot for some sluggers, but there have been no homers in the in the series. Our crack research genius Hal Galima quick to point out Spawn got 277 of his wins after turning 30. That's still very impressive. Well, what a move he had the first base. This pickoff move was the best I've ever seen. And he worked at it. I still bump into him occasionally yeah. doing some shows around mm -hmm. the country. He hustles his way back to Oklahoma. He has become a gentleman farmer right. right here. Big rancher, about about 10,000 acres back when you get an acre for about 50 bucks. So I'll tell you. <laughs> Do it all. Understand he grows cattle and baseball yeah. stories there. Yes. One gets bigger than the other. He picked off. Uh, the runner and Joe Adcock, our first baseman and the umpire, all at one time, one <laughs> night. Threw the ball right down the right field foul line. He got them all. And there was a story I tell on the banquet circuit that he, his, do, his move was so deceptive one night, he picked the runner off first base and the batter swung. But no one <laughs> seems to believe that. But he did have a, and he worked at it. You know, he just worked and worked. So there were stories like he walked a guy in a, in a tight game and then picked him off. There's a base hit to left. Well, Sheffield has three hits in this series. Sharp single to left field. Boy, he wraps the bat, but he is so strong that he gets it in a good hitting position. Hits against that front leg, takes a good pitch, shoots it in the left field. How about some names out of uh, baseball stardom in Omaha against Nashville? Home runs. Vince Coleman. Who did he hit it off of? Dave Rigetti. Fairly close at first. Tim Belcher signed with the Cincinnati Red Farm System today. One out, one on. That's that little snap move of Avery. Sheffield, not a guy who is going to steal you 40 bases, but he is a good base runner. Usually if he takes off there's a pretty good chance he's going to make it. He's a perfect two for two this year. That pitch broke low and away. Pendleton's on deck. And correct that he was two for two coming into this ballgame. Remember he tried to run on Avery in the fourth after getting a lead off walk and Steve nailed him. He was guessing first move and guessed wrong. What Steve has to be careful of, and I don't know if we can get a, a picture of it or not, but he cannot bring that right leg back of the rubber and then throw to first base or it's a balk. If he brings it back of the rubber, he has got to go home. And that's where the guessing game starts over there. And that's why he's developed that little move. And it's very difficult for a young left-handed pitcher to change his style. And I'm sure that Leo Mazzoni said, I don't want to affect your delivery to the plate. I don't want to change your motion. So he continues to use that. And there's a runner breaking, and he took it. No problem. Now, what he did, what Sheffield did, is he guessed that Avery was going to go to the plate, and he would bring the leg back of the rubber. And when he does that, the only place he can go is home. And he had a big jump, and he won the, won remember, the gamble. Remember in L.A., they stole a lot of bases, and they were going off the flinch of Avery's left knee. They got three in one ball game. And what Sheffield had his mind made up as soon as that left knee bends, I'm going. What he did earlier was break a little bit too quickly. That time he waited till Avery committed to the plate. Conine missed it. He has an infield hit and he struck out. This guy was a pitcher at UCLA. A lot of these athletes, a lot of these baseball players played different positions growing up. Marquise Grissom was a pitcher in college. Down at Florida AM. 
That's a big run out at second base. Avery's got to hold them because we've had problems scoring. There's only three innings to go, and we're down by two now. Something else Steve Avery has to do right now. Remember in L.A. he got into a little bit of a habit of one look to second. Sheffield has already shown you he's got enough speed to steal. And if Steve doesn't vary his look, Sheffield will take a walking lead. And as soon as Avery takes that one look and starts back to the plate, he's off and gone. So many more ways to score from third than second. One look and go. Pop foul out of play. It's kind of a guessing game. The last time that Sheffield was on, he thought he read Steve and Steve picked him off. But he broke a little bit quicker that time, yeah. Ernie. This time he waited just a split second longer till that right leg you talked about had started forward. Then he was gone. He knew from the flinching of the back leg that he was committed to the plate. Remember in L.A., both DeShields and Mondesi swiped third on that one look. There it is, one look and go. Foul away down that right side. So many good base stealers are successful because of something a pitcher does. It's not blinding speed, but because something a pitcher does to tip them off. And if you get into a habit, the best thing you can do is vary your routine. It's much like a, a hitter. If you pitch the same pattern over and over, major league hitters will pick that up. You have to vary it, holding runners on just the same as you do uh, uh, selecting the pitch and pitching inside, pitching outside. One look to the plate, a good base dealer will see that cap head toward the plate and take off. Look back, look forward, go. Curveball inside, ball four. First and second. One down for Pendleton. It's only the second walk by Steve Avery. Pendleton fly to right and he lined to center. And Bobby Cox is on his way out, and uh, that might be all. Normally what we see, Leo Mazzoni makes the social calls. Bobby Cox comes with the hook. Mark Waller just coming in. And while they make the pitching change, we'll break away for this message. Well, Steve Avery pitched very well. Five and a third inning, six hits, two runs, a couple of walks, and four strikeouts. Much better than in his first outing, and he's got to be pleased. The Braves haven't given him any runs. They have failed to score, and now here is Wolers, who pitched well yesterday. His ERA is high at 6.75. He has no wins or losses, but he seemed like yesterday that he, uh, no, it was day before yesterday, excuse me, that he slowed down his motion just a bit, and he had better control. In well, Tuesday's game. And a lot of times numbers dictate a move like this, Ernie. Terry Pendleton in his career about 25 points better against left-handed pitching. Last year, that number almost up to 40 points. So one of the things you want to do, you want to hedge your bet a little bit, try to give yourself a little bit of a chance. And over his career, Terry has shown he hits lefties better. So Bobby just try and uh, take advantage of those numbers a little bit. And again, this might be another one of those attempts to try to boost the confidence of Mark Wolders. He had a good outing. Let's get him back out there in a crucial situation. Or I mean, it's not life or death right now, but it's it's you know it's a little bit on the line. Let's get him back out there, coming off of some success, and see if we can add to it. Pendleton steps in. We might get from Hal Galima a uh, pitch count, uh, the number that Avery had. Are we Swinging can, a miss. Or we can phone Pete Van Weeren and get it. Speaking of Pete. <laughs> Here's Avery. He is, uh, you don't hear too much out of him. He's a quiet kid, got a great sense of humor, but just like Greg Maddox, keeps a lot of stuff inside. He is one intense competitor. He's got some fire. We know that. The 0 1 pitch. Going to third. Throw. Save. He stole that on Waller. What a jump. Sheffield got. Well, remember, we, he was watching the one look, but he was watching it off Avery. So you change pitchers. The same philosophy still applies. If they only give you one look, take off. And Waller's only gave him one look. Here he goes. Shuffle, shuffle. Head turns home. Here he goes. He got a breaking ball to run onto, which helped him. 
Pretty good throw by Charlie O'Brien. The tag right on him. But that extra step that he got from the one look made the difference. Still a chance for a double play. The one one pitch. Fastball right on by him one and two. Wallers has a good fastball. It's clocked at over 90. And a split finger fastball and a slider. Terry Pendleton a better breaking ball from the left side. If you give him anything off speed right now in the strike zone you're doing him a favor. Terry a little bit tardy on the fastball. Look to see Wolter stick with that fastball. If you're going to throw him a breaking ball don't throw it for a strike. Fastball struck him out. Good call Donald. Another fastball and he got him. And here's Andre Dawson with runners on the corner. This baby had some giddy up on it too. Watch it down and running and Pendleton a little bit tardy. That ball wasn't in the hitting area but Pendleton saw fastball and just couldn't lay off of it. Good pitch. Now Andre Dawson with a couple of hits but there are two outs. He tripled in a run and he singled. 91 pitches to count for Aries, uh, for Avery so he's extended himself pretty good Ernie. And that's enough on a second outing. And the pitch. Fastball a little high. Charles Johnson is on deck. Look at these numbers on Dawson. Well, anytime you're in the top 50 in anything in the hundred and what 20 years of Major League Baseball. 428 homers. Pop foul out of play. 2701 hits coming in. Now he has 2703. You got Hall of Fame numbers. Uh, here's a situation where a guy's a little bit older, the bat just a little bit tardier. Don't do him a favor by speeding that bat up and throwing him something off speed in the strike zone. If you have to show it, show it out of the strike zone, but pound him upstairs with the fastball. Breaking ball over. One and two. Now you'd almost bet on a Swifty. I mean, he's ahead in the count. He could, he could throw a high tight. Well, you really don't want to back that pitch yeah. right there with one the same speed. Yeah. There's one thing a veteran hitter will do is know how to adjust. Little pop on a changeup back out of play. Got away with one. That was a hanger and Dawson just a little bit off on it. One ball two strike. Yeah it is a sport. Yeah it's one you played for fun as a kid and it is also one you like to play for fun and make a living at it but it's serious business. Wallers to Dawson fastball outside two and two and nothing could paint that picture that it's serious more vividly than a look at Steve Avery. Sheffield's at third. Conine is at first. And Dawson the batter. And Waller's a pitcher with a 2 2 count. And it is on the way. Line toward right should be caught. And it is by Justice. He fought the lights. The lights are giving problems tonight. And David hung right with it for the out. They strand two. We're going to inning number seven. We're going to the top half of the seventh inning. It's time for the Aflac trivia question. Who holds the major league record for consecutive errorless games by a second sacker? We'll give you that answer a little bit later on. Seventh inning, here's Don. All right, Ernie, thank you very much. O'Brien Lemke and the pitcher's spot do up. Mike Stanton is starting to throw down in the bullpen. So it looks like it's a pretty good chance we will get there, Stanton. And he just asked, am I in there? Nodded yes, so yes, Michael, you are in there. Get yourself ready. O'Brien hit by a pitch, single, one for one. Charlie has drawn three walks and been hit by a pitch in this young season. Two to nothing, Marlins. Two runs, six hits, and no errors for the Marlins. The Brave held to five hits. Yorkie Perez, his second inning of work. Oh, that's a saw job. Pendleton makes the play. You can put a new handle in that one. That may have hit him right on the thumbnail.
inside around the hands. He tried to get the bat out in front, but couldn't, and he's got the part of the bat right in his hand. Here's Mark Lemke. By the way, that trivia question will give you the answer. It's not Mark Lemke, although Lemke does have 71 in a row. That's pretty impressive. First pitch to Mark down low, and it's 1 0. Mark has walked, he struck out swinging. That's Mike Kelly. He will bat in the pitcher's spot. Nice job. Nice outing by Steve Avery and a nice follow up job by Mark Rollers. It's, that's another step in that confidence building that you have to have to go out there. Upstairs, two balls and no strikes to Lemke. Kelly had a big hit last night, a double, knocked in a run, coming in to play left field. There's a strike and it's two and one. Mike Kelly taking advantage of some high tech that we have in baseball now. He was out in our production truck and he hit and we happened to have the cameras rolling during batting practice. He got a chance to see if he had made some adjustments. Boy, so many ball clubs shoot videos and let you look at them and Braves do that and boy was I glad that I was able to be playing when that came into being three and one to Lemke. There's ball four. Good start here for the Braves. Braves need two to get it even. First walk issued by Perez. His predecessor Pat Rapp only issued one. That had to make Renee Latchman awfully happy. 16 walks and three hit batsmen in the first two nights. The announcement made for Kelly. He will stand in. We're in the seventh inning from Joe Robbie Stadium. The final game of a six game road trip before the Braves take on the Phillies for the weekend. Kelly one out of three is a pinch hitter a buck seventy six for the year. First pitch swinging. Is everybody all right? That got above the Marlins dugout in a hurry. One of the reasons that's John Johnstone cranking up down there. He may face Grissom and Blouser if Perez can get through this. Good pitch. 0 and 2. We're talking about the base on balls. Marlin pitchers to this point have issued 18 walks and four hits batsmen. Nine Braves runs have come from that collection of free tickets. Kelly in a hole, 0 and 2. Good stop by Charles Johnson. We haven't been with you the last couple of nights. Ernie and Joe have had it on Sports South. We've been on radio, but how many times in the last three nights have we said, nice stop, Charles Johnson? Good looking catcher. Tremendous arm and a heel hit. He hit 28 homers, knocked in 80 runs last year in the minors. Another another good stop by Johnson. That'll run at two and two. A second reliever has started to crank up in the Marlins bullpen. That is Dunbar. So Renee Latchman going lefty righty to get ready. It's a time of the ball game when the chess game begins. Where if you're one manager, you try to manage your bullpen and their bench at the same time. Out of play. Kelly still alive. Still two and two. You watch some managers, Ernie, and you swear they're managing both dugouts. Because they're just trying to get the matchup they want when they get down near the end. I've been told most good managers are almost two or three players ahead of you. They're thinking down the line, if this happens, I'm going to do this. So it doesn't jump on them sudden like. They've got an idea about right down the line. Kelly out in front of this whistles it into the crowd down the left field line. Still two and two. I know Pendleton is is guarding that line. He's trying to take away a double because the tying run is at the plate. But uh, another re another reason you can see Pendleton. Another reason is that uh, Kelly's double yet last night went right over the bag. That may have hit a fan and folks if you're at the ball game you're sitting close don't take your eye off the ball. Did he go. Yes he did unfortunately. Good pitch by Perez. He rings up his first strikeout. Two outs now if the Braves are going to do some damage they have to do it with two outs. He couldn't hold back. He went around and Perez gave him a 
little animated strikeout move. You're asking a lot to score with two outs, but 23 of the 42 runs that the Braves have scored to this point have come with two outs. So the Braves have already shown early this year they're a good clutch ball club. Marquise Grissom, the hitter. Outside, 1-0. and Take a look at Perez now after the strikeout. This is no kin to Pasquale, but watch. Ah, I want to see the one he does when it leaves the yard. Yes. Out of play. One and one. That's like I used to think. Remember when guys start running to the mound to pitch? Yeah. Logically, if you run to the mound to pitch, <laughs> you get your pants knocked off. I guess you're supposed to run back to the dugout. I never liked it when they ran no. back from the dugout. No. I never liked it when a guy struck out and ran to the dugout. Chopper, tough play for Pendleton. Oh hum, another good play for Terry. Race come up empty in the seventh. No runs, hits, or errors. One left. Seventh inning stretch. The Marlins lead it by two. We're going to the bottom half of the seventh. There's your line score. Time for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Who holds the major league record for consecutive airless games by a second baseman? Ryan Sandberg 123 and he retired early. That is amazing. That is a pretty good streak. I considered a 71 to Mark by Mark Lemke. There are so many things that can go wrong down at second. That's a new Braves pitcher. Mike Stanton will come on for Stanton outing number five. He is one and over the three eight. You see that right there. In the two and two thirds innings or the two and a third innings. Stanton has struck out one. He's walked one the league hitting 222 against him. Good two thirds of an inning by Mark Waller. Struck out Pendleton, got Dawson on the fly ball to right. Keeping him up a little bit late to watch his Marlins, or maybe his break. Johnson, Carr, and in the pitcher spot. They've been double do doing double duty down in the bullpen, so we'll see if they go to a pinch hitter. And it is starting to mist a little bit here. Out of play, 0 and 1. It was in the forecast, a chance of rain tonight. By the way, if you're interested in the NBA playoff, the Knicks have beaten Cleveland. Right side, maybe a chance for McGriff near the railing and got it. So one out. So it's going to be the Indiana Pacers and the New York Knicks in round two. One out for Chuck Carr. A strikeout and a fly to right. I think Indiana and the Knicks played last year. Last two years, the uh, Knicks have eliminated the Pacers. Breaking ball is upstairs. Steve Decker has a bat. He is out on deck. Look like that will be all for Yorkie Perez. We'll see who they turn it over to. Ground ball. That's going to get through. Base hit for the Marlins. They're looking to add a little insurance. They have a speedy guy at first. And here's Steve Decker. Now uh, Stanton's got a good pickoff move to first base. He snaps it over there and in great fashion. He's not easy to steal on, but uh, Carr is fast. He had uh, 58 stolen bases in 1993. Decker one out of five. This is his first time up as a pinch hitter this year. There's the ho hum move just to let you know he's there. I remember Decker. Don't I from coming up with the Giants a few years ago? And boy, we all thought he was going to be great. Remember, he came up hitting bullets. Did a good job catching, but just uh, never could unseat Kurt Manwaring. Here's a look at that final in the NBA. That'll rearrange Charlie O'Brien's beard with that foul tip, and it's 0 and 1. It's a big guy, Decker. Well over six. 
Remember back in 1990, up briefly, he had about almost 300. Had himself three homers. Just never could put anything back to back. Snap throw, boy, that is so close to a balk. Yeah, he he gives everything the umpires. He takes everything that umpires will give him. You're supposed to step toward first. We can see Stanton goes a little bit toward home plate, but the umpires haven't called it. Here's that movie you were talking about. Decker checked his swing on it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Looper, that's going to be trouble. A base hit to right field. Carr will cruise in the third. Justice will bring it back into McGriff. They're at the corners, and the Marlins trying to add some more to it. That looked like a good pitch from Stanton. Just some pretty good hitting from Decker. Yeah, sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. And he just reached out and singled the right field. It was a good pitch. Here comes the rain. And here comes Kelvy Overis. By the time he gets ready to hit, we could be inundated here. Well, you've got a perfect setup for a squeeze play down there at third. The guy at the plate's fast, and he's the little bunter, and the guy at third can run like the wind. And the pitcher has his back to the runner at mm -hmm. third. Although he works from the stretch, he can't see how far he's going. Swing and a miss by Varus, and it's 0-1. Varus has grounded to second. He has struck out looking and grounded to short. Well, we have a second here. I sure want to thank Chuck Poole, our director of media relations for the Marlins. Margo Malone, Adolfo Seguero, and Mark Geddes, his assistant, for the nice little package when we showed up at the hotel, the information on the ball club and the clippings, and it was a nice gesture. These guys do a good job here. Mm -hmm. But the first base, McGriff has one play. That was not a squeeze play, but it gets the job done. Well, it wasn't a suicide, but it was a safety. The safety squeeze is when the runner at third makes sure the ball is bunted fair and he runs so fast that all he had to do was jog and run in and uh, you got to give the little guy credit there for getting that ball down toward first. That's a big run. All Carr was waiting for was to make sure that the ball was on the ground. After that it's a cakewalk for it. Second out in the inning it's a three to nothing ball game and here's Diaz. Two My ground outs and a fly to right over three. I might add a suicide squeeze is when you start running from third as soon as the pitcher winds up. Safety is when you wait to make sure that the ball is dropped down. Terry Clark starting to throw in the Braves bullpen. You know something else, Ernie? Just pointed out to me by Hal Galima. Car may have missed the squeeze sign because it looked like Varus was committing all the way to make sure he bunted. One and one, the count. To Diaz. And sometimes a batter will even say, though, in that situation, look, I'm a pretty good bunter. Now, be alive. Anytime I'm up there, I might try to push a bunt. So he pushed a bunt and he ran in from third. One ball, one strike. Decker, the runner at second. Let me get one and two now. Three runs, eight hits, an airless ball for the Marlins. No runs, five hits, an airless ball for the Braves. Marlins with two in the second, another here in the seventh. Low scoring, good pitching ball game. Quite unlike the first two here at Joe Robbie Stadium. On the ground. Oliva got a hurry. In the dirt, dug out nicely by McGriff. Nice play on both ends. That saves further damage, but it comes after the Marlins put one on the board. They do it on two hits and leave one stranded. Seven in the books. Marlins up by three. Ernie's not gonna. Let's take a look at the Delta scoreboard. This afternoon, the Giants beat San Diego at San Diego. Montreal has beaten New York two games in a row at Montreal. Doing it again. No score at Cincinnati. Rain. Houston three, St. Louis two and third. Baltimore beat Milwaukee for a change. And Kansas City shut out Minnesota. Detroit by one over Cleveland. And the Red Sox leading the Yankees. Later, Oakland at California. Some defensive changes for the Marlins here in the eighth inning. Jeff Conine moves to left field. And he's uh, and coming over to replace him, there's Greg Colburn. The new shortstop for the Marlins will be Eddie Zosky out of the Toronto organization. And the third pitcher of the night, there he is, Rob Nen. 
You are going to get to see an unusual pitching delivery from this young man. I was talking to some scouts here tonight. They got him on the radar gun last night at 95, but wait till you see the little stutter step he uses in his delivery. Watch the left foot. See, tap bounces this one up there, and it's 1 0. I've been in this game forever, and I've never seen a pitcher do that. Watch him touch his foot now, right? There, and then scoot along and pitch. I'd be afraid of stubbing my toe, <laughs> but he throws about 90 something. Blouser will lead it off. There's ball two outside. 15 saves and 15 opportunities. You can't do any better than that last season. 2 0 to Blouser. You know, in watching him do that, one thing that it does do, I don't know that he started that to cause it, Ernie, but if you watch him tap that foot, it is impossible for your weight to get out front and for you to get off balance. You're going to keep the weight back and work over that back leg when you do that. You cannot rush your delivery and do that. I'd have short spikes. <laughs> <laughs> and hope the clay was not soft. Yeah. His dad played in the major leagues. Washington and the Dodgers, right? Mm -hmm. Dick Nen. Dick Nen. He was the first baseman. Count even at two and two to Blouser. We spot all these things. If someone wears some colorful shoes, we spot that too. In our never ending quest to bring you all the facets of Braves baseball. Like Gary Sheffield. Little looper. Zossi's got it. Well, there you are. That's why they made the change to get a little more height at shortstop. This is a nice catch. No luck for Blouser. The Braves have hit a couple of line drives that have been caught. Grissom hit one that Dawson caught and left. One gone. Here's Chipper Jones. Chipper wearing the collar tonight. 0 for 3 has hit the ball well a couple of times. There's the strike and it's 0 and 1. Play him to pull in the infield, but the other way in the outfield. That was a good breaking ball. Boy, it's hard not to swing at that after looking at that 95 mile an hour heater. Double duty down in the Braves bullpen. That's Steve Bedrosi in the right hander. Brad Woodall, the lefty, who has something called Morton syndrome. One, two, three, go sit down. Strike out of Jones, two gone, and then running some gas up there. He's actually pitching better than last night when he gave up a single and a walk in his one inning. I was reading today about Brad Woodall. It's a little bit of a Morton syndrome in his left foot. There's Brad. Said he got a shot for it, but he was feeling much, much better. I guess that's like a nerve condition between the toes. I'm not going to wander into deep medical water there. First pitch to McGriff is a strike. Nerve condition between the third and fourth toes. What they're going to do is give him a shoe stretcher and fit him with special supports and inoculate that baby. Oh, and one to McGriff. throwing nothing but strike. Braves are at home this weekend against the Phillies tomorrow night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, and Monday. So you have plenty of time to catch the Braves games at night and go out to see the Bell South Classic. The best of the PGA appearing in Atlanta at Atlanta Country Club. Davis Love the third, a big Braves fan. I know he'll be at some games. He's off to a good start too. So what a golf. Spend the day at the golf course and then come to the Braves game. Chin music and it's one and two. Davis showed me something when he had to win that tournament to get into the Masters. And one of the reasons we want you to watch this is that here on TBS we bring you the Grand Slam, the Senior Grand Slam, and the PGA in the middle of the summer. So whoever wins this one will be at the PGA. On the ground, Varus is there. 
McGriff is gone. Good inning for Nan. He sets down Blouser Jones and McGriff. One, two, three. Bottom of the eighth. Marlins up by three. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. There's your line score. Florida up by three. Our next telecast is tomorrow. The Phillies come to town on TBS at 735 tomorrow night. Braves and Phillies. They're in for four games. Fourth pitcher of the night will be Brad Woodall. A lefty will come on. This will be his third appearance of the year. First couple of times, rocky outings for him. He gave, five, gave up five hits. Six runs for them earned. The earn run average will come down, but we found out a little bit later he was pitching with some discomfort. That problem with his foot. Gary Sheffield will greet him. The city of Sherman Oaks, California now has one more Braves fan, and I want to congratulate three friends of mine, Tim and Vicki Guttridge, and big sister Allison, who is two, on the birth of first son and first baby brother, Matthew Williams. All right. The youngster weighed over eight pounds. He is already taking batting practice. He was huge. So congratulations to Vicky, Tim, and Allison. He's already stubbing his toe on his delivery. <laughs> Every little leaguer in the country watching this game tomorrow will go out and try to throw like Nen is, stubbing their toe a little bit. But and Eric, Eric Johnson, don't you dare do it, Lefty. And, and every little league coach will go nuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three and out of shit. I saw Nen do it. <laughs> three balls and no strikes. Well, you don't want to give this guy any crippled pitches to hit. Remember, early in the ball game, three and zero, oh, he was green lighted on Avery. Not this time. It's ball four. Not a good way to start it. Out to the middle of the order, and here's Conine. He'd be followed by Pendleton. I want to get a little plug in, if I might, for my buddy Pete Van Weeren, the professor who I'm pinch hitting for. He's doing NBA playoffs. The Braves, an illustrated history of America's team. A new book. Check out your local bookstore. Written by Bob Clappish and Pete Van Weeren. It's a history of the Braves from day one. Boston to Atlanta, and you're really going to enjoy it. Left fielder Jeff Conine takes a strike. It's 0-1. Conine a single, a strikeout, a walk. He has scored a run. Three to nothing, Marlins. Bottom of the eighth. So is that book signing for uh, Pete going to be up at Hester's General Store? <laughs> up in our neighborhood? They, have, they haven't scheduled one up there yet. <laughs> Got to talk to Aaron first. That's inside. It's one and one. Three runs, eight hits for the Marlins. The Braves have been fell to five hits by the trio of Rap Perez and Nin. Good pitch by Woodall. I talked to Bobby Cox one day about Woodall, and he said his changeup is as good as anybody's on the staff. He's got a, a circle change, and it's great. Goes down and away. It's a, very similar to Avery and uh, and to Tom Glavin's change. Boy, that's a pretty good compliment when yeah. you consider you have Maddox, Avery, and Glavin here. Arguably three of the best in the business yeah. at changing speed. A little bit out of the Glavin mole. Misses inside. That'll even it at two balls and two strikes. Come to think of it, maybe he didn't say as good as any on the team. <laughs> <laughs> but he did say a great changeup. <laughs> And he does have a good chance. Token well, throw to first. Well, Woodall won a lot of games last year. Triple A baseball. I think he won around 15. Was he Triple A pitcher yeah. of the year? 15 games at Triple A. I mean, when you do that, you deserve a chance to pitch in the major leagues. Unfortunately, there are five quality starters already here. Yeah. I believe when he came in in relief the other day, it may have been the first time he had ever pitched in relief in his professional career. I could look that up, but why not let Hal Galima do it? There goes the runner. Conine strikes out, but they had no chance to throw out Sheffield. That's three stolen bases for Sheffield tonight. Three out of four. And he stole that one on Woodall. Yeah, he's going on that leg kick. And he's gambling a little bit as he sees that leg come up. And I think it does go a little bit back to the rubber. See whether it does. And uh, he just says I think he's going home and he guessed right again. One out 
A little more insurance in scoring position. Terry Pendleton, the hitter. Pendleton hits about uh, 25 points higher from this side of the dish. That's out of play. Oh, and one. Let's see if Terry approaches hitting against Woodall like he did against Glavin and Avery. Against those two, it looked like every time he went up there, he had his mind made up he was going to take a shot to the right side. Fly to right, fly to center off Avery. Though, but low, it's one and one. By the way, I was wrong on that. Woodall was a reliever when he first signed. They made him into a starter back in about 92 or 93. All of last year and most of 93 was a starter. This is a token move just to keep him from getting too frisky at second. I'll never forget an old manager Dutch Dorman in the minor leagues that we had. He had a meeting before the uh, as the season started. He told everyone to play all out all the time and he said you'll never know who's watching you just because you're playing for the Braves system that doesn't mean you're going to be up with the Boston Braves you might make it with another ball club there's scouts watching and and he's so right because so many minor leaguers end up with another organization right. yeah. As a matter of fact that's good advice at any level yeah. of baseball one ball two strikes to Pendleton the runner on second is Sheffield. Braves cannot let him come around. Up the middle. Blouser's there. Two gone. Sheffield moves up 90 feet. And Colburn will be the hitter. Andre Dawson started in left field tonight for the Marlins. Got a triple, a single, and a fly to right. Two out of three. Drove in one and scored one. And then Rene Latchman went to his defensive alignment. Colbert came on the first. Conine went to left. They've gotten to a point now with Andre that uh, Latchman looks at where they are playing. He wanted them to play in Montreal, but he didn't know whether that artificial turf would hurt his legs. I mean, running on artificial turf, if your legs are bothering you, uh, well, it just takes it out of you. And one of the reasons Andre Dawson, a product of the Montreal organization, made the move to the Chicago mm -hmm. Cubs right. to get at least 81 games on the ground. Then he went up to the Fenway Park up at Boston. Breaking ball misses downstairs, and it's two balls and no strikes to Greg Colbert, another product of the Montreal organization. Well, they do have a fine scouting and minor league system there. Sheffield big lead at third. Down low, three and zero. Oh. Charles Johnson waits on deck. Looks like Brad Woodall may be pitching very carefully to Colburn. He might swing on a three zero. -oh. He might He's not. Taking it was a perfect pitch. <laughs> you're green lighted three and zero, oh, Ernie. It doesn't mean you have to swing. It just means you're given the privilege to yeah. if it's a strike. Make sure it's a real fat pitch. Here's the 3 1 pitch. In the air to left field. I don't think that one's going to. Yes, it is. It hangs up for Chipper Jones. Boy, it looked like he got all of that one, but it just hung up there. So a good job of pitching around the leadoff walk by Woodall. No runs, hits, or errors. One left to the ninth. Three last outs for the Braves. Playoff time on TBS. Van Exel and Sabalas have put the Lakers up 2-1 on the Sonics. Will Peyton and Kemp come on strong or go home early again? Sonics Lakers tonight at 10.30 Eastern on TBS. Sunday, a TBS premiere. It's like nothing you've ever gone out to before. Indy! Don't look at it. Harrison Ford, Raiders of the Lost Ark, 10.35 Eastern Sunday. Turn to TBS. Top of the ninth. Marlins lead it by three. This, by the way, we're in what? The second week of the season? Wrapping up the second week of the season. This is the first save opportunity for a Florida Marlins pitcher.
Now that Brian Harvey is injured, by the way, this, uh, the surgery, they found out not only did he have the ligament problem, but he had a muscle tear. Yeah. Brian Harvey, the surgery was successful. But then again, when have you ever heard anybody say it was unsuccessful? Yeah. But hopefully for Brian Harvey, it is. He'll be back. He's a good guy. This guy is their closer now. Could become one of the best in, in the National League. Tommy John had the surgery first. That was called a Tommy John injury. And uh, John came back and had two or three good years. Yes, he did. The rain starting to fall a little bit heavier here at Joe Robbie. Justice to lead it off. It's foul and it's 0 and 1. I'm sure Skip and Joe told you a new member of the roster, Mike Sharperson, just called up today. Look at the rain there. He's wearing number 26. Clusco will be eligible to be reactivated the 18th. Upstairs, 1 and 1. And the rain getting harder. Justice is grounded the third, single and triple, two for three, and off to a good start at 367. How's that one off his foot? One and two. Twenty-three thousand five hundred and fifty. About what it's been for the last three nights here when the Braves have visited Joe Robbie Stadium. Up and away, two and two. Good battle with Nan and Justice. It's still two balls and two strikes. Justice a good fastball hitter. Nan a good fastball to bring up there. Jose Oliva on deck. And they're sticking around for this one, although there is some rain falling. We've got some fans here. Hot smash. Booted by Zosky. Not in time. David Justice with some good hustle on that. A lot of times a hitter will see it hit at an infielder and kind of Cadillac it. But that's some good hustle by David Justice. We take a look at it. This ball was sharply hit right at the shortstop. He bobbles it for a second, but Justice with a last second lunge. Watch him come into your picture with that right there. Good. Just made it. Good picture, guys. They haven't put that one on the scoreboard yet but here's Oliva that's back our way let's see if they give him a hit or an error on that it was a tough chance they're going to give him a base hit well I'm a little surprised it was hard hit but it was right at him that's three tonight for David Justice that's hit number six for the Braves Long one here. To left field. Conine, it's out of here. Well, like I was going to say, a long one here. We got ourselves a ball game. It looked like he hit that with one hand. It pays to be strong. And I think Oliva did hit it more or less with one hand over the scoreboard and left. You can play it off the board. McGriff hit one yesterday that hit the top of the board and came back for a double. But Atlanta all of a sudden trailing by only one. And here's Smith as a pinch hitter. Take a look at this pitch. I believe it was out. It's a curveball out, out over the plate. And he reached for it. He did not have all his power. Look at that. How can you hit a ball that far? Well, that swing. First pitch swing, and this is headed toward left field, and it's going to be off the board. Smith's going to get himself a double, and the Braves are wearing out that handball court in left field. Three hits in a row, the tying run 180 feet away. Still nobody out. Listen to these Braves fans here. They haven't gone home. Many of the Marlin fans. Started to leave at the top of the inning when it started to rain. 
Mark Lemke's the batter. Javi Lopez has a bat. He is out on deck. Let's see how Bobby Cox plays this with Mark Lemke. Johnstone again starting to crank it up in the Marlins bullpen. He has already been up once. Plants and Bedrosia keeping it up in a hurry down the left field line. Well, Mark has got to get that run of the third where a fly ball gets him in. So he'll do all he can to pull it or bun it. And you can see the rain starting to fall. A lot heavier here. Lopez on deck. Lemke hits this one to right field. Headed for the corner. On the run is Sheffield. The dive, he's not going to get it. Here comes Smith. Lemke's headed for three. And Jimmy Williams is going to throw up the stop sign. Four in a row, and we're tied. Sheffield may have really hurt himself on that. The Marlins just now realizing you saw the all out effort they had shaded Lemke toward right center field and Sheffield going flat out took the dive for it and he's not moving. We commented uh, yesterday and the day before when Lemke came to the plate they seemed to be a little shallow and bunched and as though he couldn't hit a ball really that far but what he did is he pulled the ball right down the right field foul line and the right fielder Sheffield's a long ways away from the fly ball and he leaves his feet along the line he didn't run into the wall but he hit the ground hard look at how far he has to come that ball is right down the line watch his neck snap back see his head snap back and he slides out on that synthetic turf out there the pavilion here's a look from this angle Ernie watch his head snap well we may not see it but when he dives his head bounced Marlins are going to make a pitch no they're not they're going to cover this up we'll tell you all about this take another look at it but right now let's pause for a timeout right here. There's a look at Sheffield. He is walking on his own power, but boy, he hit it hard down there. Ernie, it didn't look too good coming to the ninth. I mean, you got Nin out there who was five for five last year, throws the daylights out of it. All of a sudden, the Braves have put four hits in a row together here. And he had a chance for a save, and he had 15 out of 15 last year. It just goes to show you that in this game, you just anything can happen. By anything the way, in this happen. inning, the Braves have hit for the cycle a single by Justice, a double by Smith a triple by Lemke and a home run by Oliva right now we are in a rain delay they have rolled out the tarp here it was raining very hard right now still coming down kind of swiftly we're going to have some time here so why don't we go back to the studio EJ Jr. Ernie Johnson Jr. is there and let's see what's up with him EJ. I can tell you this Don you're sitting there with my dad Ernie Johnson Sr. and in the old days in the rain delays you would have the big right hander holding a clinic and he'd tell you how to throw that curveball snap it off down this way pull let the ball rotate here or how to throw the palm ball deep here lots of pressure with these fingers not much here throw it just like you throw the fastball and ladies and gentlemen you get the hitter right out in front of that who wants that ball we don't have to do that anymore these days thankfully we've got the NBA on TNT we can go to in a rain delay it's the Chicago Bulls and the Charlotte Hornets Chicago trying to put this thing away let's take Coming up on SportsCenter, it can't happen two years in a row, can it? This is the look of someone in the zone. That's a game face. That, that's just a facial. Gary Moeller says goodbye to the maize and blue. Rashid turns in his Tar Heel blues. And if Stack leaves too, Dean will certainly have the blues. The Mets with an extra inning game sounds like a grand idea. Has the wizard forgotten some of his tricks? Holy big binoculars. Holy boredom, and a holy sports center is next. And hi again, everyone. Welcome to Sports Center along with Larry Beal. I'm Brett Haber. 
Do or die time for the Sonics, Hornets, and Cavs. Rashid makes his decision, and Gary Moeller makes one of his own. We begin with George Carl, who may be sleepless and jobless in Seattle. Yeah, definitely the last chance to save his team, maybe the last chance to save himself. If Del Harris was named Coach of the Year for getting the most out of the least, George Carl may be the coach who is getting the least out of the most. Seattle fans are getting impatient now with a team that averages 60 wins during the season and then gets bounced in the first round of the playoffs. It happened to the Sonics last year, and some have suggested if it happened again, George Carl may want to put together a resume. Seattle just one game away from that reality. Game four, first half. Gary Payton. Watch the no-look backdoor pass to Kendall Gill, and he puts it away with the reverse But Nick Van Exel. He likes to shoot from deep, and he does. One of his seven three-pointers, and then Nick, he can penetrate as well. The floater off the glass. Sonics lead by four in the game. Second half, Detlef, the miss. But Sean Kemp cleans up the mess, and then with the clock running down at the end of the third quarter, Gill, the dish to Payton. He beats the clock, Sonics by eight. Lakers claw their way back, Eddie Jones baseline. And then Van Exel, does he ever miss from the perimeter? What a bargain in the second round. 93 all tie, Eldon to Vlade, Lakers up by three, but don't celebrate too hard, it's not over. Kemp, baseline, over Vlade, Sonics lead by one, and then it is tied at 108. Detlef, runner, baseline, no good, and Kemp's got the rebound, but he's over the top, that is a foul, he's not pleased. Eldon at the line, first one is good, one point lead, they ice him. And he's got ice in his veins. Lakers lead by two. Seattle tries to tie. Sam Perkins? We think not. Misses the tying jumper, and the Lakers hold on to win it by four. They win the series three games to one. L.A. will meet the Spurs in the second round of the playoffs. Lakers get past the first round for the first time since 91. Nick Van Exel had 34, playing all 48 minutes for the third straight game. After the game, Seattle coach George Carl was asked if he fears for his job. That is succinct. That is his answer. As good as Nick Van Exel was in the regular season, he has been even better in the playoffs. 46 minutes a game, 25 points per contest. Outrageous considering he's also running the point. And even with all the minutes, just two turnovers a game. And now the second round pick is into the second round of the playoffs. Larry. The Charlotte Hornets won 50 games during the regular season, and the prize for their accomplishment was an invitation to their own funeral. Heading into game four of their series with his heiress, Michael Jordan, and the Bulls, the Hornets were collectively dangling at the edge of the cliff. One loss away from elimination, the Hornets had to win in Chicago, where their lifetime record was 1-14. and 14. We pick it up at the end of the first quarter. Michael on the move. Is he going to pass? No way. Jordan, hand in his face, nothing but net. Bulls by five after one. Second quarter, Scotty Pippen around LJ to the hoop. With authority, Bulls leading by 10 at the break and coasting. But in the third quarter, the Hornets come back. Percy Hawkins stops and pops. He had 15. And the Bulls just go ice cold. Michael had the open look. Misses the jumper. Jordan again. Fade away on the baseline. Misses again. Bulls with only 11 points in the quarter. And the Hornets storm ahead by three after three. The Bulls wake up. Bill Wennington getting up for the slam. And here's Michael, the hoop and the foul. Michael had 24, Bulls by one. Hornets take a one-point lead only to see Scotty hit the floater. He had 24. Bulls by a point with five seconds left. Charlotte ball. They go to LJ. Air ball. Hersey reverse. No. And that shot is too late. Hawkins wanted the foul on Jordan. The push from behind. You make the call. Little contact. You're not going to get that in Chicago, that's for sure. And the Bulls do hang on, 85-84, winning the series three games to one. They will face the winner of the Orlando-Boston series next. The Bulls score only 31 in the second half, but that is enough. While Charlotte's season ends, the search for a point guard who's got a jumper must begin. It's obvious. I mean, you all saw it. You all saw the game down the stretch that last minute. There were controversial plays. The decision should have been made to make a difference in the game, and they weren't. You know, and I'm just upset about it. I will say this, that Charlotte gave it one heck of an effort tonight. And, uh, you know, we felt that if there's another five minutes in that game, we might not have been able to hold them off. The home crowd helped us in the last sequence of events in the last uh, part of the game. I'm very happy that I'm back. And I'm very happy for uh, that we were able to pull out a victory that maybe we didn't even deserve with the way we played in the second half. But uh, 
those things come when you when you really you know when you, when you want them to and, and sometimes when you don't want them to and I'm very happy that it happened the way that it happened that we did win I'd rather play and win than to play good and lose Hornets with absolutely no sting in the fourth quarter, managing only 16 points on three for 14 shooting. They could not get the ball inside to Zoe or LJ. LJ only one of five from the floor. Game four between the Knicks and Cavs. Cleveland staring right into the face of playoff elimination. Patrick, his legs were hurting, so the Knicks launched from outside. Derek Harper with the three, then John Starks. He hits the three. In fact, four in the first half for Starks, who finished with 15 points. Ewing spent much of the game on the floor with heat packs on his legs. Limited mobility. Patrick becomes a passer. Anthony Mason over the shoulder to Charles Smith, who blows the layup. Still nicks up by 11 at the half. Cavs in need of divine intervention. And Harper begins to heat up. Off the window for three. Harper launching for three more. Derek Harper feeling it. I mean, really feeling it. Season high 30 on 7 of 10 from downtown. Anthony Mason with authority on the jam. The Knicks coasting 93 to 80 win the series three games to one. They will face Indiana next. That'll be a rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Finals won by the Knicks in seven tough games. This one was like a night off for Ewing who came up with only nine points in 33 minutes. Making up for Patrick, Derek Harper who almost totaled as many points in game four as he had through the first three games of the series combined. Harper, 7 of 10 from outside the arc, and that's why the Cavs have an early start on summer vacation. Brett? Well, the impending rookie salary cap in the NBA has drawn yet another underclassman into the professional ranks. Rashid Wallace making it official on Thursday that he is indeed coming out for the NBA draft. And unlike Jordan and Worthy, who left Carolina after three years, the 6'10 center will come out after just two. I love the game of basketball, but I'm not trying to play basketball the rest of my life, and I know I can't play the rest of my life, so uh, I have to do what I have to do now to secure my future. The salary cap, you know, that's money coming out of players' pockets or anything, but I'm not thinking about that because I love the game of basketball. I'm not, th I'm not out there to sign a contract for a hundred zillion or whatever, but, you know, I love the game of basketball. Wallace's teammate Jerry Stackhouse is also on Dean's list of possible underclassmen going pro. Stackhouse's mother said Thursday that the sophomore will announce his decision early next week and that she believes her son will in fact turn pro. Larry. Baseball news now. Chili Davis admitted that nobody likes to apologize. And then after receiving a new three-year contract from the Angels, Davis did apologize. On Wednesday, Davis publicly questioned whether the Angels organization was racist. The team had offered him a three-year, $11 million deal while the players were on strike, then rescinded it. Thursday, Chile said he was sorry. His remarks came only from frustration. There is an apology necessary here, and I, I you know, I, I personally as a man and as Chili Davis, a.k.a. the dog, would like to make that apology to whoever was affected by that. And um, if I felt that way at all about the California Angels, I would not sign this contract today. Chili and the Angels against the A's. Tim Salmon is taking Todd Stottlemyre deep to center field. His fifth home run already. A's leading 7-6. Look out, Mark McGuire. Hit for the second time in the game. Has a few words for Angels pitcher Russ Springer. And then, in the bottom of the seventh, Salmon is hit by the Jim Corsi pitch. And you know what's coming. Bodies are flying. The bench is empty. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, a lot of dancing. You saw Davis trying to get in there. And... Nobody really hurts, just your typical baseball brawl. The A's end up winning at 9-6. Despite giving up six runs in five-plus innings, Todd Stottlemyre picks up his first victory for the A's. Eck getting his second save. Catcher Brian Harper, who just signed with Oakland last month and went 0-7 this spring, has decided to retire. Brett? After five years of trying to fill both Schembechler's shoes and back-to-back eight-and-four seasons, ultimately, it was a drunken tirade that brought an end to Gary Moeller's coaching career at Michigan. Moeller resigned Thursday as the Wolverines' head coach in the wake of an incident that saw Moeller both arrested and hospitalized for that drunken behavior. The school insists it was that incident and not his coaching performance that brought about the resignation. It is with the deepest sense of regret that today I have accepted the resignation of Gary Moeller as head football coach at the University of Michigan. Gary has asked for a leave of absence. 
He remains part of the Michigan family. I wish he wouldn't have did it, uh, you know, wouldn't have stepped down. But I guess, um, you know, advice and other reasons, mm -hmm. I guess it was the best thing to do. I'm not here to judge the man. And um, we're here as far as a team and, well, I should say as far as a family to mm -hmm. say that, you know, we're supporting the guy. You're not with your family and the coach has become part of your family. So it's very sad to see Coach Muller, you know, this happened to him. I would um, not be honest if I didn't say that uh, we are wounded and we have great pain. But I would say to all of you, don't shed any tears for us. We don't want your tears. Don't feel sorry for us. We don't want your sorrow. Lloyd Carr will take Moeller's place on an interim basis as the Michigan head coach. Amongst those named as possible full-time replacements, former Colorado coach Bill McCartney, the one-time Michigan assistant, was contacted by boosters, but did say that he is not interested in the job. And there is still plenty more to come on this edition of Sports Center. The Flyers begin their Stanley Cup journey on Sunday, and Eric Lindros may not be there. We will update you on his condition when we come back. Also, still ahead, we will see where the Philly Serena's song stacks up in the Kentucky Derby draw. And Butch Henry. There's Butch going for the year's first no no. Highlights are coming up. Welcome back when the Marlins drafted closer Brian Harvey to a team that presumably wouldn't have that many games to save. The assumption was Harvey would be trade bait. The Marlins waited for two years and assuming that was their intention, probably waited too long. Harvey had elbow surgery Wednesday. He will not be back this season. GM Dave Dombrowski said nobody made an offer for Harvey that was worth taking. Marlins playing the Braves. Three, Rob Nen takes Harvey's place. Unreasonable facsimile. Jose Oliva takes him over the board. Marlins lead it three to two. Still in the ninth, Dwight Smith comes on to pinch hit. And he takes a shot to left field. Jeff Conine has got a beat on this ball. He's got a chance at it, but it is raining hard. And raindrops are falling on my eyes, and the ball is falling on the floor. That's a double. And Mark Lemke up. Still nobody out. He hits one down the right field line. Gary Sheffield gives it a go. Comes up with a chest full of grass. Too much rain as we tie the game at three. And so they call it suspended in a three-all tie in the ninth inning. They will pick it up in September when the Braves visit Miami again. Braves will have This Friday night on Dinner in a Movie. Don't miss The Breakfast Club. And find out how to make The Breakfast Club sandwich with Paul and Annabelle. Dinner in a Movie. This Friday night at 8.05 Eastern on TBS. Hello again, everybody. We're back in Miami, and it's still raining, and we still can't play the suspended game, and the forecast not particularly good. They say it'll rain for at least another hour, hour and a half. Then hopefully we'll have a window and be able to work in the suspended game and the regular game, that is, to follow. When and if we play the suspended game, the Braves will have a runner at third. Nobody out top of the ninth in a 3-3 ball game. And the time of that game, our research staff has been Hard at work time of the game on the first game at this juncture, 3,083 hours and 25 minutes and counting as we get ready for the hostilities to resume. But they can't resume yet before the rain continues to fall. What a bad break. Who's the Boss is our next award-winning program coming your way, and then we'll be back to update you on things. There's, what's his name? Mar Maroney the Marlin, Billy the Marlin, having a fine time cleaning our camera who's the boss is next then we'll be back to let you know what's what in muddy Miami when foul balls land in the stands the chase begins all you need is a sure pair of hands and a lot of perseverance he or she who gets there first and holds on gets the goods. There we go. There's an excited fan here in San Diego. Did he ever lead a marching band in college? He certainly could with those high steps. I think that fan's going to get the baseball. If he, he can fight. He's going to have a lot of rivals getting that ball, don't you? Oh, there's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> what a bad break. Bad break. I mean, Come on, I'm wearing the New York shirt. I'm the only one in sight, and I don't get the baseball. And I probably won't get another one up there all night.
A long run for Johnson, but he can't get there. And a tumble for one of the fans in the stands. This is what is known as a big league header. Sometimes the best plays are made by amateurs. What a great catch that that guy made in the first row of the seats. That was a rocket into the seats. He brought his glove today, and he's got a souvenir, and that is a happy young man. <laughs> he should put it in his pocket any minute, then a couple of innings later, they take it out and look at it again. That's what I would do. Yeah. Gets a smooch from his girlfriend. He caught the ball in his hat. <laughs> Foul ball, and that will not be played. Yes, Except by a young man. Wow, nice play, <laughs> little man. Good scouting report for like that he knew man. where it was coming. Definitely. Whoa, fully extended. Don't fall on anybody now. Of course, it isn't always fans who get in on the act. A great play on the dugout. What a play by the fanatic. <laughs> you got to love that one. Well, they have uh, something here this year with senior citizens. Being uh, ball boys, ball girls. I would suggest that he pass that ball along and start watching the game before another line drive comes down that way. Maybe he was auctioning it off or something. <laughs> there we go. It's a happy young fan. It, she says, "No, that's mine." <laughs> Just showing it to everybody, honey. They'll bring it back. She says, "That's mine." It's, it's not, not fair. fair. <laughs> oh, she's gonna cry now. Just to make a make a trip down there, make sure she gets one. Happy camper with a souvenir. Oh, don't throw it back. That's what we do in the yard, Dad. Got his socks jacket on. He's ready. Oh, that's cute. Celebrities and baseball go together. Whether they're hovering overhead or being wined and dined in private boxes, they're not hard to spot. I knew he wasn't dead. <laughs> He's been all over the place. Look who's eating those nachos. He loves that food here. You better get back to jogging again. Well, look who's here tonight. Our good friend Bill Murray. He's incognito tonight. No, he's in the seat. TV star Janine Turner seems to have taken up a passion for the Cubs, having been spotted at several of their games. What in the world brings you to Chicago? Um, <laughs> oh, the, the Cubs, the <laughs> Chicago Cubs. Janine Turner, hey, good to see you. I good hope you come you. back very, very many more times. Thank you. Have no fear, Harry. Janine will be back for more Northside Exposure. Well, you TV fans know her immediately. Janine Turner, Northern Exposure. There she is right there. I never see much uh, TV at night. I just have to watch that show. Tom Brenneman along with Steve Stone and Janine Turner. Janine may be having a graceful time, but for other famous folks, being at the ballpark is made for strange companions. Bob Hope, Bob and Dolores Hope. At the game this afternoon along with Willie Nelson. So Willie and Bob and Dolores Hope. I'm sure you recognize this guy, Dan Marino, one of the greatest quarterbacks of them all. Tony Bennett. I don't think he left his heart in the San Francisco. He left him some food stains or something. It's like, <laughs> poor Tony might have dropped something. Through the perilous fight, oh, the ramparts we watched. Ray Floyd, one of the finest men you'll ever meet and some golfer. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, Batman in the uh, WGN TV booth next to us? Yes, it is. Michael Keaton is here tonight. Oh. And Elvis is here. Is Elvis? I guess Jerry Glanville sent his tickets up from Atlanta. <laughs> so just remember, when it comes to celebrities, if you leave tickets, they will come. Welcome back to Joe Robbie Stadium after almost an hour rain delay. Looks like we're going to get this suspended game underway as the Marlins have taken the field. Here's what happened back on May 4th. The rains began to fall in the ninth inning. The Braves were trailing three to nothing. David Justice against Rob Nin hits one hard off of Eddie Zosky. He played it into an error and the Braves were in business. Jose Oliva followed 
Oliva got off to a good start with the Braves. He was two for four, including this home run over the clock in deep left field, and suddenly it was a one-run ball game. After Oliva circled the bases, Dwight Smith came up, and the winds began to whirl around this ballpark, and Jeff Conine had trouble playing that ball. Smith had a double. Reigns got a little bit heavier. Pressure a little bit heavier on Nen, and then Lemke drills one to deep right field, and Gary Sheffield makes an all-out effort to haul it in, but injures himself on the dive, and by the time he recovers, Dwight Smith circles the bases. Lemke had a triple, and the Braves had a tie ball game, and Gary Sheffield injured on the play, eventually went on the disabled list, but he is back active now as we are just about set to get underway. In fact, Sheffield back out in right field, and to set things up, there is Mark Lemke at third base, so he is going to run for himself. Javi Lopez was about to pinch hit that night, but instead it's going to be Luis Polonia and Rob Nin still out there for the Marlins. Nobody out, top of the ninth inning. And the infield comes in for the Marlins. This is a weird feeling, isn't it? Starting, starting in the ninth inning with a runner at third base. Awfully strange. Polonia has done a great job off the bench for Atlanta. He breaks his bat on that one, hits it out of play. It's 0 and 1. Not a whole lot of folks here for this game. Let's see who's at shortstop for Kurt Abbott. Yeah, Kurt Abbott. He'll hit third in the bottom half of this inning. Polonia, Grissom, and Blouser, the scheduled hitters here. Obviously, Jeff won't hit. He's still hurting. So Polonia gets a new war club. The outfield plays Luis Shallow and way around toward left. They are camped on the left field line. If anything, everybody ought to feel right at home. Rains continue to fall here after the delay today. Maybe a little bit lighter than it was when things were postponed back in May. Yeah, that was monsoon time back in May. It's raining pretty good now. The 0 1 pitch. Go ahead, run at third. He's in the hole 0 and 2. Zen and Nen is throwing a lot better now than he. Well, remember he, he came in and pitched great in the eighth, got him one, two, three, but then in the ninth he ran into all sorts of trouble. He had been pitching great leading into that ninth inning and a couple of other outings for the Marlins. And of late, in fact, last night they had him clocked at 92 miles an hour with his slider. The rain coming much harder right now. 0-2 pitch. Didn't miss by much. Down and away. Jeff Kellogg behind the plate tonight. Rich Reeker is at first base. Harry Wendelstead at second. Randy Marsh at third. This is the crew that had to officiate that fight the other night in Houston between the Reds and the Astros. A ball and two strikes. Two and two. One thing about it, you don't figure there's going to be a wild pitcher pass ball with Charles Johnson behind the plate. He's about as good as you're ever going to see. And if there's a tough break for the Braves, it's that he's been on the disabled list, was just activated. Friday had a broken bone in his hand. You can see it's taped up. Men gets ready. Broken bat grounder. Here comes the runner. He will score. Everybody's safe. Lemke held up for a moment. But when the ball went off his glove, then he was able to get home, and the Braves have the lead. Kilvio Kil Kil Veras finally came up with it. That's an infield hit and an RBI for Polonia. And this guy just continues to do good things for the Braves from the plate. He puts the ball in play here after falling behind 0-2. Hit it hard enough that it created some problems for Veras, and Mark wanted to make sure that it got away from Veras far enough for him to score, and there's the lead run. It took us from May 4th to get that run on. I hope Nen's been throwing on the side to stay loose. Marquise Grissom the batter takes slow one ball no strikes Grissom was 0 for 4 that night Greg McMichael is going to come on and try to close things down and Javi Lopez is on deck he would pinch it next for Blouser there goes the runner swung a pop foul back well oh, that's a shame he had it stolen he had it stolen by he would have made it standing up you would like to think so, but you never know with Charles Johnson. Oh, yeah, he was halfway. Tough break for Polonia. They were playing hit and run, and Grissom tried to steer it through there. 
Four three Atlanta our score. Throw to first Polonia gets back if the Braves make this lead stand up I hope somebody thinks to get the game ball for Brad Woodall it would be his first major league win even though he's not here that would be nice. There. Two balls and a strike. Rain continues to fall here. He's had a terrific year and very impressive as a defensive player. As good at blocking balls as we've seen anywhere this year. And he's hitting 236 now, which isn't great, but compared to where he was. 2 1 pitch runner goes, swung and missed. No throw. Polony is in there standing up, and the count evens at 2 and 2. So Polonia gets himself in a scoring position. There's still nobody out. His second stolen base since joining the Braves. Two two pitch on the way. Swung and drilled deep left center field. I don't think the park will hold it. That ball is gone. On a 2-2 pitch. There's still nobody out in this inning. They haven't gotten us out here since May 4th. And Skip, I'm telling you, this guy's been mowing people down. Rob Nin's been pitching great, but this is almost like the Braves are picking up where they left off against him back on May 4th. Everything they hit early in the ball game was hammered. And early in the ninth, I should say, was just ripped. Renee Latchman does not want to use up his relief pitcher for the rest of this evening if they are able to play the full regularly scheduled game. But this is in the part of the park just to the left of the 434 mark. Mark, he's got all of that one. So a new pitcher will come into the game and then started tonight just like he finished back on the 4th of May, back after this. Buddy Groom Jr. is the new pitcher for the Marlins. The left-hander. The line on Nen for the night. An inning plus five hits, six runs, five earned, two homers. And it's raining a little harder here. Let's get this thing over, Zoe. That may have been in their thinking when they decided to go ahead and start it in the sprinkles here. They thought, well, if we can get at least get this one out of the way, if then if it gets worse, you play just play two tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I was on the plane today with this umpiring quartet as they were coming in and I asked Harry Winstead I said I guess you have volumes of information on this game since you weren't working it back on May 4th he said no to tell you the truth we don't have anything but we know that all the material will be faxed to us at the ballpark it's waiting for us there and sure enough when they got to home plate tonight a big discussion over who was available and who wasn't with respect to tonight's contest. Groom gets ready to go to work. First pitch is low, one ball, no strikes. Six three is our score, and Atlanta on top. Probably a good cut, but he fouls it back. Jeff Blauser one for four tonight with a double. And Marquise Grissom just <laughs> tonight hit both his first and tenth home runs of the year, and he's only batted once. That's incredible. When this game started, he had no homers. When it ends, he has 10. I'm confused. So is Bobby. I, I tried to give him my score sheet tonight. He's all please. He's had, I've looked at so many different score sheets. I'm, one more will drive me nuts. High fly ball down the right side. Sheffield on the run again into that corner. At the wall, he makes the catch. That was deja vu for him. I'm sure that's almost like the ball left you here. One up. Here's Chipper. Right up against the wall, he makes his catch. Almost overran it. You can see he's, his left hand heavily taped. He had sprained a ligament, actually tore a ligament in his left thumb, rounding second base, tried to stop and go back to the back, put his hand down, and that's why he was out of the lineup for an extended period. 
Chipper hits one hard but fouled into the seats 0 and 1. Braves had a six run fourth yesterday a six run ninth today. Now this is what I don't know how can people possibly think that baseball shouldn't be speeded up this has been going on since May 4th. You're really something. I know. By the way while we have a moment here and things are going good. Our friendly competitors and colleagues Chris Berman Buck Martinez really deserve a tip of the hat the way they handled the Ripken thing yesterday. Marvelous. Struck him out had to tag him out to the the hardest thing to do in our business in an exciting moment is to let the picture tell the story and they went 20 minutes without saying a word and to me it's as good a broadcasting as anybody could do I'm proud of both of them and it was a thrill to watch it was a thrill it was very exciting the post game to me was exciting just to see a lot of people that he played with on that first game back in 82 when the streak started. I love the rock his teammates gave him too. the landscape boulder. Low and inside it's got the twenty one thirty one on it. And it weighs two thousand one hundred and thirty one pounds. Hot shot right field base hit McGriff. So Fred is aboard. And David Justice the better he started this inning with a ground ball to Eddie Zomsky who was then the shortstop. And he was safe on a bang bang play at first it was ruled an air and had he been out who knows what would have happened in that game. I think how long he's had to wait to get this next at bat this inning. That's right it drives you crazy. The possibilities are. I wonder if he had to put that bat away so they make sure he used the same bat. I don't think so. I think that was probably long gone. Probably the same batting gloves. Oh that could be. A swing and a miss 0 and 1. And the Orioles deserve a lot of credit too. They, you couldn't have run that thing any better than it was run. First class. And what, baseball never needed anything more than it needed what it got yesterday in Baltimore. Well it is poor now. We do see some breakage in the clouds down the right field line. Okay. Two balls and a strike in this game. Justice two out of four with a run scored a single a triple reached on an air rounded to third. Two balls two strikes. By the way all the stats that had accumulated up to the point of the suspension were already included in everybody's statistics to this date. It's just that whatever happens from the resumption of the game that will be added on. Curve low three and two and McGriff will run with a payoff pitch. Mike Devereaux waits to hit next. Isn't it ironic that the two pitchers who started the suspended game, Pat Rapp and Steve Avery, are the guys scheduled to work tonight? Strange. They want him two on, two out. So the inning continues. Justice is aboard, and Devereaux hits. Richie Lewis gets up and begins to throw for the Marlins. And Devereaux stands in. He'll stay in the game in all likelihood and play left field. Jones, will move, who was playing left field when this game started, will probably move into third base. And Raphael Belliard will doubtless play shortstop. Dwight Smith would be next. He pinch hit that double back on the fourth. But there are two out here, so it's up to Devereaux to do something. Two on, two out. Three runs have scored. Ground ball sharply hit, but right at Barris will take it himself. And the inning is over, but a very good one for Atlanta. The Braves come off the deck and score six times. On six hits, they leave two. There was an air. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Greg McMichael on at 6-3 Atlanta. 
Braves make these changes. Javi Lopez is behind the plate to do the catching now. Chipper Jones moves from left field to third base. Mike Devereaux is in left. And Greg McMichael is on to pitch as we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The rain continues to fall here, but it's a cinch that it would take a monsoon to stop this thing now. A six run ninth for the Braves. Three of them scored in May, three of them scored in September. And it's <laughs> six to three. It's weird. And if you are not up to snuff on this ball game, weren't aware Mark Woolers had already pitched in this ball game. Two thirds of an inning back in the sixth, so he's unavailable tonight. Charlie O'Brien is not available. And Mike Kelly had pinch hit. He's not on the roster. Greg McMichael seeks his first save of the year. And he's ahead of Charles Johnson. Mention Johnson was hitting 048 when this game started. He's hitting 236 now. And he's quickly in the hole, nothing in two. Florida 55 and 64 as they bat here. He started to go but held up. A ball and two strikes. Justice Grissom and Devereaux right to left in the outfield. Jones, Belliard, Lemke, McGriff left to right on the infield. Two and two. And Lopez and McMichael the battery. Chuck Carr waits to hit next. Two two pitch. Little squiver towards second. Lemke in up in the mud. One up. You know Charles Johnson's numbers that you were talking about. They didn't know what they were going to get offensively from. They knew he was a solid defensive player. But if he finishes around the area he is now, that's really a something good to build on especially after the slow start he got off to. Yeah I think his confidence probably is a pretty good level now. It was obvious early in the year he was really fighting and really pressing. He was their first draft choice ever. He's from this area. So he's had a lot of pressure on him and a young kid catching in the major leagues. Boy, it's, it's tough learning. Carr takes a strike. It's 0 1. Didn't he used to be a switch hitter? Yes and this year. Ironically, he's been batting in the top upper part of their lineup second half of the year, batted eight this particular game. He's had a bad year. He's hitting 222. He's been hampered some by injuries. The rain has slowed a bit here. Grounded foul into the Atlanta dugout. Still 0 2. Kurt Abbott. Waits to hit next. He was on the disabled list when this game began. Didn't mean to. A back up the middle. Lumpkin's got it. Two out. So, so far, things going according to plan here. Abbott, the batter, with Kilvio Varis on deck. And if Greg McMichael can get one more out, it would be his first save since August 8th of 94. This guy's a pretty good shortstop. You don't hear much about him because they're not in the pennant race. He's a good, solid player with a little pop in his bat. One ball, no strengths. Yeah, he was on the disabled list too when this mm -hmm. game started back in May. Bit low. Lopez wanted it. Two balls, no strikes. Avery and Rapp in the. I don't know what you call it. It's not the second game with a double letter. In the next game, it'll be Avery and Rapp. There's a strike over the inside corner. Abbott didn't like it. Two and one. The same umpires, if the Braves get them out here, will work the same positions in the second game, and there'll just be a 20 minute break, if that, between games. A little chopper can chipper make the play he does high throw but he got it there in time and the game is over 
It was a tough fight, Ma. It took from May 4th till September 7th. But the Braves score six in the ninth, win at 6 3. Total highlights after this. Quite a rally, wouldn't you say? Braves scoring six in the ninth inning, all off of Rob Men, three in May, and three tonight. And they complete the win on the game that was suspended on May 4th. Final score six to three. Six runs, 11 hits, no errors. Nine men left on base for the Braves. Three, eight, and one, and six left on for the Marlins. Brad Woodall, his first major league save. I wish he were here to enjoy it. He is still competing in the International League Championships down in Richmond. Rob Nen, the loser, he is 0 and 5 on the year. Greg McMichael earns his first save of the year. 23,550 were here when we started this baby back in May. Not quite that many here tonight. Braves magic number with the completion down to six. And the tarp is going to come back out. It looks like they're going to cover the field as they begin to work on it a little bit more. They had said that the game was going to start 20 minutes later, but we'll wait to see how that's going to work out. In the meantime, our AutoZone player of the game, Luis Polonia, who came through with the game-winning RBI in the ninth inning to drive in Mark Lemke and give the Braves their go-ahead run here tonight in the ninth inning. What's they, what are they saying our time of the game was? Three hours? Is, is that what they it, said? They say three hours, but it was actually 3,020 hours and four minutes the way we have it <laughs> figured since this baby started. Well, we're going to take a break now. The Greatest League Championship Series is going to be our next presentation. And it features the Pirates and Braves in 1992. As Joe pointed out, they just made an announcement the game was going to start in 20 minutes. But while they're saying that, they're also covering the field again. So we don't know what that means. At any event, we will uh, send it back for the championship series of 92. If you're a Braves fan, I got a hit for you. You're going to like how that come, comes out. <laughs> and then we'll be back and let you know what's what from Miami. The good news is the Braves have won the suspended game by a final score of six to three and we'll be back in Florida in just a little while. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, three was also a lucky number in 1990, 91 and 92 as they celebrated three National League East titles. Yet their fortunes took a dramatic swing for the worse in the championship series. In 1990, the Pirates lost to eventual world champion Cincinnati. In 91, Atlanta's spectacular pitching silenced Pirate bats for the second year in a row as the Braves celebrated a victory in Game 7. Yet the following year's rematch against Atlanta proved to be an even greater disappointment. In 92, I mean, it was unbelievable. We were down three games to one and to come back and have a 2 nothing lead in the ninth inning, I thought was a... It was a really remarkable accomplishment. Nobody will ever remember it because we just didn't, you know, we didn't get that final out in time. That final out in game seven was viewed upon by all of baseball as perhaps the most gut-wrenching conclusion of any championship series in baseball history. Pittsburgh leads two to one. One out of the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth. Hunter, little looper, leaned is there and makes the catch. The runner tags but will not try it. Two down to the bottom of the ninth. So it all comes down to a guy who got some big hits for the Braves last year, but who has spent most of the year languishing in the minor leagues at Richmond. Francisco Cabrera is the batter. What a spot for him. Kind of like a dream, a fantasy type thing. And it's situations that a lot of times you put yourself in as a kid, you know, on the sandlot or just out messing around or whatever. Perfect, isn't it? I mean, Guy, nobody expects him to get hit. He's a perfect guy to send up there. He appeared in only 12 games this year for the Braves and batted only 10 times with three hits. We were down to the last straw, and Frankie's always a good guy to run to the plate. Anytime during the game, he's going to give you a great at bat, and he's got a chance to hit the ball hard. Belinda's first pitch, a breaking ball outside. I thought anytime you put a kid in that situation, you know, they're going to be over aggressive. I thought for sure they're going to feed him breaking balls. You know, he's a dead high fastball hitter, and I was saying, boy, I hope he gets a high fastball and make it interesting. A most unlikely man in the spotlight for Atlanta. 25-year-old Francisco Cabrera, who takes ball two, two and all. Oh. I knew that he was going to get a hit or hit the ball hard. I mean, I've played against him in AAA. Uh, and he's always hurt us. He has no nerves. I was concentrated and just try to hit the ball 
And I don't worry about the things or anybody when I hear. Because if I think about the things, then I don't concentrate in the game. The 2-0 pitch. Well hit, but hooking fouled and left. He had the green light on 2-0 and, and hammered it, but well fouled over the Pirate bullpen. And hit it very, very hard. Now I got one strike. Two balls, one strike. What tension. When I'm home watching something like that, I hope that every single person I'm going to play with the next year is home watching that as well and, and realizing what we're all here for. But this is my opportunity to uh, be a hero and, and show the people and, and, and my team what I can do. He hacked at the 2-0, now the 2-1. Line drive and a base hit! Just as the score of the tying run, Green to the plate! And he is safe! Safe at the plate! The Braves go to the World Series! The unlikeliest of heroes wins the National League Championship Series for the Atlanta Braves. Francisco Cabrera. Thank you, Lee. Oh, I think I think I'm going to be right now. And uh, I don't know what to say. And I went to a ball and said, well, that's the time for me to be a hero. What a great thrill it had to be for him. It's the kind of story that goes all over the, the country and the world, you know, a guy that uh, comes up and pinch hits that's uh, not all that well known around the country, and uh, I was real happy for him. That game, that hit, that moment uh, is probably going to go down in, in the history of baseball as one of the greatest moments in, in baseball. And again, for us to be a part of that, I mean, that's, that's awesome. A championship series shot heard round the world. This has been presented by Major League Baseball Home Video.